They share the field with the Eagles, with the Link dressed up for Halloween and Temple Cherry Red. We the T is what they say around here, and these fans hoping that the Temple Owls are ready for their close-up, a showcase game against the Fighting Irish who are used to the big stage. Heather Cox with the youthful third-year coach of the Owls, Matt Rule. Chris, thank you so much. Coach, many are saying this is the biggest game in Temple history. So how are you helping your guys keep perspective tonight? Well, we have we have great kids, and, and I've told them to enjoy it. I've told them to focus on playing and uh, uh, just be themselves, trust themselves, and go play, and let's see what happens. You also told me yesterday it's important that your team knows that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Notre Dame. So how have you been able to get that message across? Well, uh, they have to believe that themselves, and I think, you know, the way we played uh, for really for three years, the way they've grown, if they don't believe themselves, no one else will. I believe in them, and they better believe in themselves as well. And Matt, best of luck. Enjoy tonight. Chris and Kirk? Another thank you. Meanwhile, Brian Kelly says that this is March Madness. It's must-win mode for Notre Dame. They're targeting the playoffs still. If they can win important road games like this one, they'll have to do it away from home where they have frankly struggled. This feels more like a neutral game. Plenty of Irish fans here. The Owls scored 27 straight to beat Penn State going away to open their season. Could they beat the Nittany Lions and the Fighting Irish? in the same season nobody would ever forget if they were able to you would have told me in august we'd be in philly for notre dame and temple <laughs> i would have said you're crazy but it's been that kind of year for the owls and we're happy to be here this is going to be fun night irish won the toss and they want the football immediately so tyler mays the senior will boot it away for temple and cj sanders the freshman returner is a dangerous man on the receiving end of this kick at the four sanders slip a tackle is dropped at the 26. so here comes to sean kaiser filled with confidence kirk in his sixth start facing a defense that will try to confuse him tonight. Yeah, sixth start, and I thought the bye week last week came at a really good time for him. He went back home to Toledo, hung out with some of his high school friends and family, and just had a chance to just kind of come back down to earth a little bit and focus on this back half of the season. It's important for him to get off to a good start, continue to avoid making mistakes. Irish first play last week was a touchdown to Will Fuller. And they throw a haymaker early and deflate this Temple team and crowd. Kaiser is flushed, chased by Matikiewicz, delivers downfield and short on the ball because Fuller was open. But right away we see number eight making his presence felt. Matikiewicz getting pressure, and Kaiser will surprise you. He is big at 6'4", about 230 pounds, but very athletic, can get away from pressure. You'll see some zone read tonight where he'll run the football. He did that quite a bit uh, last week, 14 carries against USC, 14 against Clemson. So he has a lot of mobility and is a great athlete. C.J. Procise to the left of Kaiser. Closing in on a thousand yard season, but they'll flip it to Fuller in a screen and a tackle made immediately. The Owls get up there, and that was Nate L. Smith, the starting safety. It'll be third and long. You're seeing a lot of movement pre snap. You know, as much as Kaiser has played, again, you said it's only his sixth start. He's still a young quarterback. The Owls are a bunch of guys that have played for three or four years, and they're disguising trying to confuse him as much as they can here early. There's a collision in the pit. A couple of helmets are <laughs> stuck together. That shows you these guys are hitting right away. Looks like Quentin Nelson's helmet is locked in there with an Owls players. Well, what will Kelly call now? It's a, it's a third and long play, and the Owls have been very effective defensively on third down. Well, they don't have to blitz. They've got great edge pressure, undersized defensive ends that can bring a lot of pressure off of the edge. Empty backfield. Pro size is in the slot to the left of the quarterback. Owls don't bring pressure. Kaiser has time. Delivers a strike to Will Fuller. He gets up and already some pushing and shoving. This guy's from Philadelphia and wants a huge game tonight. Interesting. They go man to man, and it gives it an easy read for Kaiser, and that is a tough matchup for Temple with any of their corners. They're very confident in Tavon Young, but Fuller gets to the inside, gets leverage, and it's an easy throw and easy read for Deshaun Kaiser. 11-yard pickup on third and eight. And the first carry for Procise, he's hammered in the backfield as Temple showing that quickness.
quickness. That's Hassan Reddick off the edge. Undersized, but very fast. Well, they're undersized, but they slant and angle. Watch the movement by these guys, and especially on first and ten. They understand Notre Dame has a pretty big advantage with their offensive linemen and the power running and pro size. So look at the movement, the slanting and angling. Good decision to go that time. The tight end that time did not have a chance to slow down the quickness of the edge. Lost three on first down. Kaiser keeps it. And rolls, has room. Takes off and is knocked down at the 44. It'll be third and five. Kirk, as we check the Chick-fil-A impact players. Let's take a look for Notre Dame. It's pretty well known if you follow Notre Dame. He's got some grass there on his face mask. But it all starts with C.J. Prosites, especially tonight. They've got to be able to run the ball. Look for one-on-one -on -one opportunities for the big play receiver, Will Fuller. Matakavich, the leader, has got to get this defense to believe that they can make plays. And also we see Martin Okwike, number 50, guy who already has had an impact. Great speed off the edge with the getting after the quarterback on third downs. And the Irish convert another third down. They've been very good this season in these third and medium situations. Kaiser looping downfield as they challenge the edge again, and it's incomplete. They went for four against Young, and here comes a flag for interference. The well, Temple crowd doesn't like it. Pass interference. Defense. Number one. Automatic first man. Tracy Jones is the official. They're from the Owls Conference. And the only thing I can think of is, is the, the right hand hook on to Will Fuller. Because when you look, oh, there he is, right there. Grabs onto him. The official's right there. Good call. In mean, li live action, and the reason the crowd reacted, it was moving so quickly, you couldn't quite see him grab onto that jersey. And I cannot wait to watch Fuller against Young tonight. That is going to be a classic matchup between those two. Do you think any receiver in the country draws more pass interference than Will Fuller? Like a couple last week against USC. They just, they just, it's they because he goes right by. He goes right by everybody. That it's, I'm surprised to see Temple's willingness to play man to man here early on this first series, twice on third down. From the Owls 41, Kaiser looks near side. It's complete to Chris Brown, and he's got another first down at the 30. So this is the kind of start Kelly was hoping for from his offense. Well, they've converted a couple third downs. And, and I, you know, we, we talk so much about Prosize and Fuller. I really believe that the emergence of Chris Brown to take some of the pressure off of all the attention that Fuller gets, he has really come on here in the last two or three games. And it's a great compliment to what Fuller can do with his big playability. Pump fake, and now delivery to Brown again on the near side, tackled immediately. Temple's defense M.O. is that they do a tremendous job at limiting big plays. The explosive plays just don't happen often against this well, group. Well, they've only allowed 21 plays of 20 yards or more, which is in the top 10 in the country. And I think I go back to the experience again. When you have a group, not two or three, but an entire group that has a real understanding of a scheme, you're allowed to have opportunities where you avoid mistakes. You don't have busts in coverage. You don't, you don't have a mental breakdown. Everybody's on the same page, and that's why they don't have a propensity of giving up big plays. Prosize on second and six. Has a crease. Little stutter step down inside the 15. Another first time before Alex Wells stopped him. Really nice blocking that time. The left tackle, Ronnie Stanley. You want to get yards, you run behind Ronnie Stanley, one of the better left tackles in the game. Luatua also did a nice job. Well, that is just textbook blocking from the entire group, the offensive lineman. 12-yard gain for Prosize. Ninth play of this opening drive for Notre Dame. Rosites has it again. Cannot get the edge. Flying up to make the tackle was Nate L. Smith again. There's Nate L. Smith and Nate D. Smith that we'll see rushing the passer but, up But see, edge. if you sat around like Chris and I did with the Bear and you watched Oklahoma State play Texas Tech, you didn't see that once. You, you didn't see after four quarters of football, you didn't see anybody come up and wrap up a ball carrier and give them a short gain or a no gain in this case. That is great fundamentals in the open field against a top back in the country in C.J. Prosize. That was painful to watch today with that, that ball. I know, I know you didn't enjoy that. No, not a fan. Nadel Smith is one of the hometown guys from Archbishop Wood High School. Timeout taken by the Owls on defense as the Irish are on the march early here in Philly. This is a
En route to 6 and 1, the Irish have had to be very resilient. The loss of a half dozen starters, including the top quarterback and the top running back. Four second half turnovers in the rain at Clemson. They come up a yard short of forcing overtime there. But then against Navy and USC, the offense really begins to click with Kaiser. Now they're on a nine play drive to open this game down into the red zone. This Temple defense has been very, very strong this year. Kaiser, a keeper on second down, picks his way, heading for the corner, knocked out inside the five. It'll be first and goal, Notre Dame. Uh, it's a quarterback counter where he follows the guard and the tight end, Wisher. Does great patience, allows the blocks to establish themselves. And again, we talked earlier in this drive, he's a big guy, but he can run. USC learned that. Clemson at times we saw that. Again, 14 carries last week alone. And what it does to a defense is an extra hat you have got to account inside the box area at the line of scrimmage or he'll continue to run for 8 and 10 yards. No opponent has scored a touchdown against Temple in the opening possession so far this season. First and goal. Porosice. Nowhere to run. It was clogged up on the right side there. Hershey Walton and backup nose tackle involved. And Matikevich right there as well actually leveraged the football and forced him to go to the inside. He gets to the outside, beats him to the edge, which forces him to have to bounce it. He, in fact, takes on a blocker, Martin. Then he forces him back inside. You're, again, you're talking about one of the top linebackers in college football. You may not be as familiar with him, but he's been doing it for four years for the Owls. On pace for a fourth hundred tackle season. That is rarefied air in college football. How about him getting off that block before he made the tackle? Kaiser keeps it and follows a block, and the Irish do draw first blood in the lane. A little flapping of the wings there by the exuberant oh, Mr. Kaiser. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, if you're if you're Phil Snow, the defensive coordinator, and used to having a lot of success, the, the adjustment right away and something that he's got to talk to his staff and his players about, about is we've got to deal with Kaiser running. It's it's be, going to become a factor until they take it away. He'll continue to see it more and more and more. Three carries alone, average eight yards per carry, and eventually the touchdown. So Temple's got to come up with some answers for Kaiser keeping the ball. Justin Yoon to the point after. It's been an explosive Notre Dame offense this year. That was an atypical drive. 12 plays, 74 yards. Yeah, they, a little methodical, but boy, they, they were in control the entire way. Did a nice job, couple conversions. And it was just, again, this quarterback, Deshaun Kaiser, just seems to get better with the, each series for this Notre Dame offense. The Irish score first here in Philly. night football presented by walmart get ideas for your game time party at walmart.com slash game time recipes aflac in just one day we process approve and pay one day pay only from aflac and nissan premier partner of the heisman trophy Matt Rule always knew he wanted to be a coach like his dad, so he went to Penn State where he was a linebacker, but really studied Paterno on what he did because he knew this is what he wanted to do for a living. He was an assistant here under Al Golden, then Steve Adazio. Spent a year at the Giants and came back to Temple as a head coach and in his third year as the Owls undefeated at the moment. Kick off to Jagger Gardner and the freshman trying to give Temple good field position, but the Irish pin him back inside the 18. And now Temple Kirk's going to take the field in an unfamiliar position. But they can draw on this game against Penn State when they were down 10 0, reeled off 27 straight points. They hadn't beat Penn State since 41. Needed some late heroics to avoid the upset against UMass and had two fourth quarter touchdowns last week on the road against East Carolina. But now we're going to see if the Owls have an answer with PJ Walker and Jahan Thomas, two juniors who are childhood buddies in Elizabeth, New Jersey in the backfield. Interesting they come out in an empty set. Looks like Shelton Day may have jumped there. Yeah, you're right. Thomas, number five, the All running side. back was in the slot. Defense, number 91. Five-yard penalty. Yeah. 
the, off, the offensive philosophy with Matt Rule, you know, the first year they were they were running some zone read and some empty stuff. Last year they went to empty, kind of like a Baylor type of offense with tempo, and it just didn't fit his personality or the teams. And this year they've gone back to being a little bit more of a pro-style offense where they rely on their running game. And one of the better backs I think Notre Dame is, will have seen in Jahad Thomas, number five. Thomas has got it, but they've got him for a loss. Quick penetration by Daniel Cage, and the Irish defense ready for him. Well, they, they, their number one goal is to bottle up Jahad Thomas. He is electrifying out in space. Uh, a guy that uh, has moved back from defensive back to, to running back, and this year averaging five yards a carry, and really has become the offense. They, they work around his ability to run the football. Lost three yards on first down, so it's second and eight. Thomas again in the slot. Walker under pressure delivers, and it's incomplete. In heavy traffic there, Brandon Shippen was defended. Isaac Rochelle got in there quickly and pressured well, the quarterback. But Isaac Rochelle walked in. He went right by the right tackle that time, Leon Thomas. Leon Thomas jumps to the outside. Watch him jump outside. And Rochelle, who's improved as much as any defensive lineman on the Notre Dame front, just shot the gap to the inside. That was my biggest concern watching film this week. How would Temple protect P.J. Walker with Deion Dawkins on the left tackle and Leon Johnson on the right? Because Notre Dame will get after the quarterback. On third and eight, catch made, bobbled, and Ventrell Bryan, who's emerged as the number two receiver on this team, and it's very early, but that was an important conversion for oh the Oh, my gosh. With everything that happened in the first drive and with the way this drive has started, Notre Dame controlling things up front. It's a nice throw, low and away, and a heck of an effort by the freshman Bryan to be able to hold on to that football for the first down. It, you're, it's part of this is just you're playing Notre Dame, your temple. You, you need some early success to believe that this is going to be a night where you can compete with the Irish. Thomas from the I formation. Darts left and ooh, came close to a big game. Cole Luke just tripped him up or he might have been still running. This is this is what they need to be able to do tonight. And this is a team that has, again, a lot of confidence when they can get that going. Sharga, the fullback, leads his way up there. And remember, we almost lost the football. Luke just trips him up. The concern that Notre Dame's had all year is missed tackles from the secondary. It was apparent in their last game again against USC. And if you let this guy, Thomas, get to the second level, he's going to shake you and take it to the house. I think you're right. I think he's as gifted in the second level as just about any back you'll see. He's got it again. Knocked down. He's a guy who he was proud of the fact that he's bulked up to 188. <laughs> yeah. For a guy who carries it 25 times a game, he's not the biggest dude. No, he's not. And I, and I think like a lot of backs that come into college, the thing that held him back maybe last year is he was dancing around too much. They said, you know, the first five or six yards through the hole, it's a one-cut thing. Then you can do your shake and bake. But we need you to be explosive through the hole, and he's learned to become more physical as a runner. They haven't been very good this year on third and short. Thomas has it again. He's not going to make it. It was a handoff deep in the backfield. Once again, Rochelle and company got penetration. Yeah, th th this defensive line is... Very, very aggressive. We got a man down here. Looks like the center, Kyle Friend. Kind of the anchor of that offensive line holding that left leg. He's the senior from Carlisle who is a Remington Award watch list guy and a crucial part of the offense. One of the leaders besides the guy that's calling the protections. Temple has been relatively injury free this season and that's a big key to the 7 or no start. His friend right there in the middle of the screen his left knee looks like you can see the grimace right away like Joe Schmidt the middle linebacker and leader right there just inadvertently trying to come in to get involved in the tackle this guy where they, they wear the braces yeah. to try to limit the damage thank goodness those braces save a lot of those the big fellas up front especially who get rolled up on great to see him walking off because he is as big to this offense as the quarterback P.J. Walker, the tailback Jahad Thomas, just a leader and an anchor up front. The Irish defense gets a stop after allowing one third down conversion. The Owls continue to struggle in that third and short. Now like Starzik in the punt. And C.J. Sanders has really emerged as a threat. That returner standing at his 20. 
and he just won't get a chance. This ball will just bounce sideways and out of bounds. And the Notre Dame offense with Kaiser and company already up 7 0. We'll go back to work from the 27. here in Philadelphia. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Kick off your drive with tires that return superior performance. Goodyear, more driven, the official aerial provider of Saturday Night Football. Of course, the home of the Eagles and the Owls. Up to the left there, you got the Sixers off to a rough start. And, Kirk, the, and, the, and the Flyers yeah. and the Philly Stadium right there all in one little cluster. Nice little setup here in Philadelphia. Irish trying to build on this lead and perhaps further deflate the underdogs in their crowd. 12 play drive to open the game for the Irish. And Kaiser trying to throw in first down. Now is flushed, has room, and decides to slide down across the 30. He's been running the ball yep. more lately in recent weeks. Yeah, and, and Kaiser here early in this game, he's been patient with a little quarterback counter here to keep this drive alive. Does a nice job of just following those blocks. You can see the instincts that he has as a runner. And then this is the touchdown with Latua. Follows him around the corner, cuts back underneath, and gets it into the end zone. Is a guy that uh, you get caught up in his arm strength and his size, but reminds you that he is it's a, a it's a threat that he can run the football and it makes the defense have to account for that which opens up more passing opportunities because of that threat he's run it four times already and there's four or five passing but flips that one incomplete it was over the head of pro size he was backpedaling and pressured and now late flags come in perhaps an ineligible Irish lineman downfield there Brian Kelly, some pretty aggressive play calling early on. He signaled offensive pass interference. Offense, number 72, penalties decline, third down. That's the call from the lineman's downfield yeah, blocking. Got, yeah, downfield blocking. It's the center, Nick Martin, who doesn't get called for a lot of pass interference. I've never heard of an offensive lineman. <laughs> That'd be the first of his career. <laughs> offensive lineman can, can have pass interference. Interesting. <laughs> You don't see the big fellas downfield that far to get a pass interference call. Here's another third down. See if Temple can get pressure. Yep, they need six. Playing man to slide. man again, Chris. Top of the screen, you're yep. right. These guys are looking over that direction. They rush four and said he looks left and delivers over the middle. Almost intercepted. Closing in there was Nate L. Smith that was thrown over the head of Chris Brown. And they are not backing down from, from their plan. They're, they're, they get Notre Dame to third down. Phil Snow believes in his guys, playing man-to-man -man with a safety in the middle. Pretty good coverage by Chandler. And then you can see the safety coming over there as well, Smith. So you had a safety in the middle. Surprised he didn't go back to his right where Will Fuller had a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Tavon Young. Owls are very good at blocking points. They blocked three of them this year, and that was uh, Tyler Newsom taking a while to get that punt off. He was hurried. It was not a good punt. It rolls dead at the 43-yard line, just a 26-yard punt. So the Owls special teams will give uh, offense good field position as we check in with Cassidy Hubbard for the first time on this Halloween evening with an update. Thanks, guys. Happy Halloween. Taco Bell Studio Update. Number 15, Michigan visiting Minnesota. Their first game since Jerry Kill's retirement. Mitch Leiter to Rashad Still. 52-yard pass. Gophers cut the lead the one. They're driving right now. It's the most first-half points Michigan has allowed this season, guys. SB Thanks will track that. Plus, the other two unbeaten teams in the American Conference in action tonight. Memphis and Houston. Walker is swarmed under. It'll be a tackle for losses. Isaac Rochelle Kirk is playing possessed in this quarter. Yeah, you're right. The first possession, it was all him. He was he was being, being able to get penetration. If we're going to lock a camera in on somebody right now, it's Rochelle who's having a field day against these tackles. Leon Johnson just does not have the quickness. It's the area that Rochelle has, has really improved the most. They said of all the defensive linemen, he's improved the most from where he was a year ago. And quickness and, and just being able to have a burst is the area that I think he stands out. You put all your attention as an O line on Sheldon Day, but Rochelle's having a big start. On second and long, Walker delivers. It's off the hands of Ryan, who was crossing there. Long 
talented freshman, but he's had a few problems with drops this year. Yeah, drops and, and also, you know, again, this is something that P.J. Walker, a guy who's played now for three years, when he, you have a shallow cross like that, you, you want to take a little bit of something off of it. You have an open receiver crossing underneath. You, you don't need to throw it as hard as he threw it right there, especially when you have a freshman coming underneath, and we're still early in this game. They're trying to get themselves settled in. Need 14 on third down. Irish rush four. Walker has time delivers far side, and there's a catch made for a first down by Brian, who redeems himself. And that time you saw Walker just in rhythm as he comes back and throws his football even before his receiver's out of his break. Yeah, that was great anticipation. And the more you see of the freshman who just had a drop, the more you feel he could become a go-to man for this offense. Robbie Anderson, the senior, who we'll talk about more later, number 19, he's kind of their go-to guy, the guy they try to get the football to. But 87, Bryant just continues to get better and better. He's out of Tampa. There is a Florida flavor to this Temple roster to go with all the Jersey and Pennsylvania guys. Here's a flea flicker. Back to Thomas, who looks near side, and it's caught. And down inside the 25-yard line. Robbie Anderson, the team's leading receiver. Another Floridian on the catch. The great thing about this is the route by Robbie Anderson. Instead of going for the bomb, like you usually see on this play, usually you're, it's kind of, you're going for the home run because they're out of position. Kavari Russell bailed. He went deep. And Anderson, I don't know if he sensed that as on his own. Watch number six. He runs like it's going to be a long ball, and he took himself out of position. Either Anderson recognized that, or it was a great call by the offensive staff. So the Owls handed off on first down to Jahan Thomas. Robbie Anderson is a terrific story. Actually has left this program twice. He got homesick, then he came back and played in 2013. Academically ineligible, Kirk, went back to Florida to a junior college, and in a 100-to-1 shot, you'd figure, came back a second time to Temple and has had a big year, 32 catches. And I think last week, he, he had eight catches and 126 yards and a touchdown late to secure a, a victory for them. I think his confidence right now, probably the highest it's been all year coming into this game. Second down, Thomas throwing far side, and that was a miscommunication as he was looking in the direction of Anderson, but he was running in. Jalen Smith pressured him. Heather? Chris, you guys will notice 79 Kyle Friend back out on the field at center for Temple. He had that left knee examined. They took the brace off, conducted an ACL test, tested range of motion, put the brace back on, made him test it, made sure he could get into that three-point stance, put some weight on it. He's doing everything he can to be in this game. Obviously, still in a lot of pain, but is going to try to give it a go. Heather, thank you. That's a relief to P.J. Walker in this kind of an offense. The snap is so important. On third down again, Thomas delivers. That wasn't going to be a first down. Owls wanted a flag, didn't get it as Thomas was closely covered by Big Sheldon Day. It's a, it's a zone pressure on third down. It's a different look. Sheldon Day, who's who's standing actually right here, drops back into coverage. Usually you think Sheldon Day, but it's again, it's Brian Van Gorder trying to get complex, trying to confuse P.J. Walker. Notre Dame is doing an outstanding job of getting P.J. Walker uncomfortable, even when he has time his feet are moving and he's antsy and it's because of the, that pressure he's feeling from Notre Dame this would be the longest field goal make this year for Austin Jones the sophomore who had the, the game winner earlier against UMass from 41 yards drives it low and drives it through so the Owls on the board late first quarter 7-3 Irish Memphis trying to get to 8-0, as is Temple. Houston taking on Vanderbilt, also coming in 7-0. It's been a league now of youthful coaches on the rise and teams that are trying to shake up the Power Five. It's kind of ironic in this, this world of realignment that we've kind of gotten past. American sometimes is a conference that gets for, forgotten about, but you're right, they're kind of flexing their muscles as a group this year. Well, ESPN, we got a great way to get you started. NFL Insider is tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock Eastern time. All the injury news, stuff that you need for your fantasy. Then 11 o'clock, Boomer and the Gang. Sunday NFL Countdown. Also streaming live on the Watch ESPN. The Eagles have the, the bye week this week. 
Bruce Arians, by the way, a former Temple coach back in the 80s. And get the Cardinals playing great football. Sure does. There are people here who remember Bruce and appreciate him or following what the Cardinals do. They're mad at the Eagles at the moment, that's for sure. <laughs> a one win can turn that around pretty quickly. Here's Procise trying to get to the edge on the near side. Chase down, hit hard at the 30, but it's a nice first down gain of five yards. Nice job by Brian Kelly here using formations to try to get Procise to the edge. He had three receivers that time to the left of Kaiser to the field, and it opened up the edge pretty nicely and made it easy for Ronnie Stanley to secure his block. And then there's the speed of Procise. Procise has been a a huge surprise in the year in which Torian Folston who led his ACL. Greg Bryant transferred and now Kaiser will throw it over the middle and it's Brown who makes the catch and gets in our territory at the 46 yard line. Kaiser's been sharp so far. Well, this, this, these linebackers get downfield in a hurry and watch the linebackers attack downhill and then look at the opening behind it. They're so aware of Procise and even Kaiser because of this way, the way this game has started, it's opening up that second level right behind the linebackers. Kaiser saw it and immediately dumped it down to Brown. It's the first real explosive play for the Irish offense. They got 25 yards. Tory Hunter comes in motion. They run it back to Procise. He'll be trapped for a loss at midfield and slammed down by Matikevich and also Alwan, the middle linebacker. Like, great job again. Taken on the block by Matikevich. Alwan also ends up finishing it off. But watch number eight. See a tight end coming around. Wisher. Watch number eight take on that block. Keeps his shoulder to the outside. Forces Procise back in. And then there, the, there's the rest of the Temple defense. That's the way Temple's been playing all year. Medikevich is, is always in the middle of it. You can see gang tackling on Procise is essential tonight to slow him down. Medikevich has led Temple in tackles every game. The only player in the FPS that can say that. Final minute of the first quarter, and he flies in there again. Right on cue, the physical linebacker with that 20-inch neck, Kirk. Watch him. Yeah, and, and you know, again, a lot of a lot of players study film. This guy's in literally till 10 o'clock at night, studying film and looking at tendencies. He said, you know, early in my career when I started as a freshman, it was just I was kind of getting a buy on instincts. Now as a junior and senior, I'm studying so much film that I know it's a lot of times what's going to happen before it actually does. That was an example of that right there. He studies also with that virtual reality tool that they have that we'll talk more about coming up. So the Owls defense has the Irish at third and 18, but Notre Dame up four. Heather Cox will have a word coming up. Welcome back to Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Walmart. Fun night in the link. That 50 50 crowd split. One of you folks dressed up for Halloween, and there is the great horned owl, as you know, as an ornithology buff, Stella the Owl, <laughs> Temple's live mascot. Irish, after consecutive losses by Procise on running plays, space third and 18. And we have a three man rush look from Temple. They do this a lot, drop a bunch of guys in coverage, and Kaiser will have all day. Flips it very short to Procise, who's going to have to break three tackles to get the first down, and he can't do it. And that's the logic behind that defense. They were kind of creeping around. They had five at the line of scrimmage, and then they ended up rushing three and dropping eight. And when it's third and long, you just see this pretty often. You're relying on some pressure. And here Kaiser just has to dump it down and then you keep everything in front of you I have eyes on the football and then you rally to the ball, which is the strength of this defense So Temple's defense Making some big plays putting Kelly's offense in, in third and long you can tell he was quizzical I would say about that choice by the quarterback <laughs> maybe Sean Chandler the talented sophomore true sophomore one of the few to play back to receive the punt from Tyler Newsom who bobbled the snap and gets a high punts away one time Temple doesn't really go after the punt to try to block it Irish get away with it Newsom knows that these owls will come after you they blocked a couple last week he was very lucky that wasn't one of them the 
ESPN College Football. You got to get the app, the Watch ESPN app. You can go to watchespn.com to download it, stream every game live. Temple's third possession. They begin at their 14 yard line in a 7 3 hole. Haven't got Jahan Thomas and the running game going yet, Kirk, as they test the middle with no success. Coming in to start this series, and this is an offense that, that prides itself on. They need to be able to run the ball. They have three yards rushing. We're in the second quarter. And, and if they're going to move the ball, they're going to put points on the board. Right now, it's going to be by Walker having to spread them out and throw. But at the same time, Marcus Satterfield said, we've got to be patient with our running game. Play action. Walker on second down. Flips it to Thomas. Who stutter steps a flag is down as he fights for first down yardage to the 24 Max Redfield tackled him, but we'll see if this comes back Odin offense number 53 After this is the goal Second down. speaking of tackling Leon Johnson the right tackle who's had a rough night against this defensive line from Notre Dame I think he is resorted at this point to tackling watch him at the top here the right tackle going up against Rochelle just wow. ends up grabbing a hold of him and throwing him down. Actually, that was Jerry Tillery, the freshman out of Louisiana. They take him out. Again, it's, it's been a rough start. They have to pull him out of the game. They're going to put in another offensive lineman to take over for him on the right side. And this is a mismatch early going in the trenches favoring Notre Dame. Simple. Does not want to beat itself with penalties. I mean, no team does, but that's very high on that priority list. They have 12 penalties at East Carolina, survive them, but that's the second damaging penalty tonight. Walker delivers a short pass to John Christopher, the senior slot receiver. They get some of the yards back. Yeah, you know, you're a play caller and you're looking down and you're trying to figure out what do you go to, and, and you think can't run the ball, which is what you want to do. It's kind of who you are. And when you throw, you got to get the ball out in about two seconds or you're going to get pressure. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. Walker's an athlete. You can move the launch point. You can include him in the running game. They've got to come up with a few wrinkles. And, you know, it's only 7-3. to three. They, They're very confident in their defense. So they're, they're not going to panic, obviously, at this point. There's a bad snap. Walker has to dive for it right near the goal line. Where will they spot it? Not a safety. The ball is at the half-yard line. But they've had problems with low snaps. Well, they, That's Chris, been a problem for friend. But Walker wasn't even ready. I don't think it was a low snap. I think Walker was looking over the defense and trying to figure out what to do. On yeah, yes, he's try, he's looking out, trying to figure out what to do. What's the where's the blitz going to come from? See him looking around, and it was he kind of leaned forward. And I don't know if it was a kind of a uh, kind of a dummy call to try to get the defense to move to try to figure out the blitz. But friend ends up snapping the ball. This is the kind of play that. Temple was hoping to avoid, you know, on a big stage, not a lot of big game experience, and now a short punt formation as Starzay just gets it out. It's a pretty good effort. Bobbled there initially by Sanders, and that's a heck of a job by the coverage team because it could have been much worse. That's about all you could hope for in that case. He did a good job just to get the ball out, and then the coverage was very, very good. It's a 46-yard punt, which he got off quickly, so they... They net 39 there. Still, the Irish will start in plus territory, trying to add to the lead. And it looks like Sanders is down. The freshman returner has an explosive weapon. He has been a, uh, a player that when he has room to run, he can do a, a lot of damage. Medikevich coming in to make this play, the, the starting linebacker. That right leg, it looks like maybe gets caught underneath his right ankle. Kevich is just holding on for dear life. And same time CJ is trying to get out of there I played with CJ's dad Chris Sanders at Ohio State great player went on to play for the Tennessee Titans sure CJ's he, up and walking off yeah, which is good, good news see. yep you'll see him get more and more opportunities not in spe just special teams for Notre Dame but also out at wide receiver especially starting next year once again then Al's defense Put in a tough position here by the offense miscues and has to come up with a big stop as the Irish begin this possession from the 40. Down at the bottom, left one on one is Young against Fuller. Procise 
hit in the backfield, but the keeper by Kaiser as he goes straight ahead for no gain. That's his read. Finch blew up CJ Procise, and <laughs> it's a zone read. And for, on a zone read, you're reading, in this case, Finch. And if Finch takes the running back, you pull it out. Finch made it pretty easy for Kaiser to make that read. He blows up Procise, and he keeps it himself on that zone replay. But the rest of that Temple defense there to do a nice job, no gain there. Kaiser's had some success, Kirk, because teams are really trying to take away a process, aren't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. Yeah, USC, there are a number of crucial moments in that game where he ran the ball well. And second and ten, Kaiser straight back, looks near side and delivers. Fuller is knocked down at the 34-yard line by Young. It'll be third down. Young is a guy who is bought into the system and is a great cover corner. They leave him out to the field, has the bravado that most young corners that are left alone have to be able to have. And I think he's been excited all week knowing that he's going up against this group of Notre Dame receivers and especially going up against Will Fuller. Talked about what a veteran defense it is. It's rare that a sophomore can crack this lineup, but Young and Chandler, both corners, are sophomores. Irish need two on third down. Kaiser fires as a flag comes in. Couple of flags now in the secondary. Corey Robinson, the intended receiver, young on the coverage, but there were two separate flags thrown. Young's locked up there with Corey Robinson. I don't know if he's grabbing onto the back of that jersey. Kind of grabbing around the waist. Holding defense. There it is Number right three. there. That penalty is declined. Pass it to first. Defense. Yeah. Number one. Accepted. Automatic first down. Already we've seen trouble with these Temple DBs trying to contain the Irish wide receivers just grabbing him now for a second time yeah and and, and again on a third down you know we've yep. seen that a couple times on third down these corners have, have been a real strength of this defense they have a lot of confidence in them but they've never faced this kind of challenge and a fired up Matt rule wants to speak to the officials he is for the second time already used a timeout on defense as the Irish have moved into the red zone trying to add to their 7-3 lead in the second quarter Saturday Night Football, presented by Walmart, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper and college football, it's a one-of-a-kind tradition. Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. And Allstate, proud supporters of college football. Are you in good hands? Temple's campus up in North Philly and their head coach spent that time out. Almost an equal measure venting on the officials about that recent call. But also, Kirk, venting on his defense with some choice words and exhorting them to, to make a stand here. This is not really the way they played the first seven games so far. Tonight. No, not at all. And he's trying to get his team to, to play up to their capabilities and also get the officials' attention, which he did a good job of both. On first down, Kaiser flips it for a screen, but it's broken up at the line. Hershey Walton got a hand. It's incomplete. They, they kind of had a double screen set up, trying to confuse the defense. Set it up to the right and to the left, but the big fella, 72, Walton, Hershey Walton. Love that name. Goes up. He's not from Hershey, PA. He's from Reading. <laughs> I saw that. I like the name. I like the name, and he's over 300 pounds, elevating there to knock that ball down. Hershey's not too far from Hershey, where he grew up. Graduate. Second and ten. Morosice makes his way for the middle, and the Irish will face yet another third down and yet another red zone play, Kirk, where I think you felt this game could be decided tonight. Absolutely. And, and what we saw early in the game for Brian Kelly was quarterback run. And the quarterback counter is something that they could go back to. You, you know, you get caught up on third down, and you think a lot about the pass, Will Fuller, Chris Brown, you know, Torrey Hunter, but... As a defender, you've got to be aware of the ability of Kaiser running the football down in this area. If the numbers are right, Brian Kelly's not afraid to go to that. 
They're playing right into the noise of the Owl student section, trying to make it tough on Kaiser. Man coverage. And right. now the Irish will spend a timeout here, and the play clock was down at five, and Kelly will talk about it. Well, there was some confusion there with the receivers. So third and seven coming up as the Irish try to build their lead. I thought you said you were going to test drive it. And our thanks again to Goodyear, official aerial provider of Saturday Night Football. Kick off your drive with tires that return superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. The Irish have driven 26 yards, but now a crucial third and seven. The kind of play that could go a long way to deciding this, Kirk. And the Owls hold them to three, perhaps, after the Irish took over at the 40. It's noisy down that end for Kaiser and company. Bring the tight end, Alizé Jones, in motion to the left. Play clock winding down. Owls do bring pressure this time on Kaiser, who just gets it away. Diving attempt, intercepted. Praise Martin Aguike, a defensive end, dropped into coverage, and the pressure pays off. A huge turnover. Chris, what a call here by Phil Snow. Reddick is actually bringing the pressure. 58 off to the right. And here's who's going to make the interception. See how he drops back into coverage? Reddick comes off the edge. They're so confident with undersized defensive ends that their speed will get home. And even when you don't get the sack, you still can get pressure and force the quarterback to get rid of the ball before he's ready to. He just threw it up and hoped. And how about the athletic ability by the defensive lineman there to make the play? Good hands. He barely held on to it. And as Kaiser throws his fifth pick of the season takeaways for Temple are so huge they made now 13 Outside. interceptions the time Isaac Rochelle has had a terrific first half a little over eager and a conversation between Kelly and his quarterback he, he, he hasn't really been too angry at Kaiser. His style is to be kind of mellow with him. I think he's frustrated because it's third down. Worst case, you throw it away. You don't want to just put it up in the air and give a defender a chance to make a play. You throw it away, you kick a field goal, and you're up by a touchdown. Exactly. It's the fourth red zone pick by the Owls defense this year. They made two against Cincinnati in a huge road win earlier. Can they get the running game going? Look out! Off to the races! Jahad Thomas shows that sudden burst and gets into Notre Dame territory. Finally, the junior breaks loose. Well, there's the jump cut. It is what he is known for right there. The vision, the ability to recognize it, and when you give this young man a chance to get to the second level, I'm surprised that Shumay caught up to him because he's got electrifying speed and great acceleration. That time, the first time we've seen him get out into the open field, and that's what makes this offense go. I'm with you. I thought he was gone. A 39-yard gain, but the saving tackle by Shumay. Ball right at the 50. Play action, and Walker's running for his life. Just has to throw it away. The Irish were all over him and knocked him down. Aquara. It's actually a heck of a play by P.J. Walker just to be able to get out of there and get away from the pressure. Wallu had him, and he was able to kind of go one way and then go back the other, and because he got outside of the pocket, he's able to throw it away. But, Chris, going back to that long run, you know, Leon Johnson, 53, I've been talking a lot about struggling against Notre Dame's defensive line, had a key block. He's back in. They took him out of the game. He's been playing so poorly back in. Key block on that run by Thomas. Thomas out of the game now, and Raquel Armstead, the true freshman from Millville, New Jersey, a more physical but not as fast runner, is in the I formation. And now, with the play clock winding down, Rule has to spend his final timeout. Yeah, the last timeout. This is a, this is a big drive, and I think Matt Rule understands that. It's an opportunity, and they want to make sure they're on the same page. So as they chat about this second down play to Cassidy Hubberth with an update. Thanks, Chris. Let's take a look at who's getting it done. Presented by Wells Fargo and safety turn running back, I guess. Jabril Peppers gets in from six yards out. His first offensive touchdown of his career. Michigan up 21-16 over on ESPN. 
Gophers head coach Jerry Kill announcing his retirement. I think we, we meet that, that news with some sadness. We appreciate yeah. what he's been able to do yep. for the Gophers. Yeah, Minnesota, you knew they would play inspired for him. Again, I, I think it was a great shot there with our, our guys to show Brian Kelly working constantly with Kaiser, only making his sixth start. As, as, as good as he has played at times, sometimes making mistakes is where you grow the most. And Brian Kelly just kind of going over that where the emotions are out of it, just kind of teaching him more about the XOs. The timeout there to get a breather for Jahan Thomas now. He's back in the game to the left of his roommate, the quarterback. Walker looks short, crossing round. Catch made by Bryant. Bryant off and running inside the 25. Brian had a big first half, his third catch already. Well, man-to-man -man coverage, and a good job of a crossing route right across here. You see a tight end coming across as well, but a nice job of, how about the speed here from Brian running away from the All-American Jalen Smith. Great speed, and again, Notre Dame's been, what's their, been their, their Achilles heel? They'll play great, they'll play great, they'll play great. Boom. They give up big plays. We've seen two now here on this drive. I can ask you, if you thought the receivers were a good matchup against those, those linebackers in crossing routes, now they flip it near side on the tackle behind the line. Anderson has knocked down an aggressive hit that time by Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith has been all over the field, which is what he normally does for this defense. There are a lot of people in the NFL world who think he may be one of the top linebackers in the country. It's because he can do everything. How about the way he covers ground? That's a wide receiver he just chased down, beat to the corner, and just body slammed to the ground. He can cover. He can blitz. He can play man-to-man. -man. He does everything for Brian Van Gorder, who's been around the NFL himself and said he's one of the better ones he's coached. On second down, Walker looks over the middle, delivers a dart! Oh, a chance, but it's incomplete as John Christopher couldn't corral that fastball. I couldn't tell if Farley got a hand on the football or not. That was a tight window. Walker threw it on a line, which is what he had to do. Let's see if 41 Farley gets a hand on this football or not to keep it away. Boy, he was, yeah, I think he did. I think it bounced off his right wrist. Yep. Right there. He's got a thumb on it, maybe, enough to yeah, disrupt enough. the receiver. And John Christopher, one of the toughest receivers they have, more reliable receiver. I thought there might be a reason he may not have made that catch. Farley, the nickelback, really struggled against the Trojans. On third down, Bryant leaping attempt a flag comes in luke was in coverage and this may be the first penalty of the evening against notre dame they're really looking to feature big ventral bryant tonight pass it to first defense number 36 First major penalty against Notre Dame. Notre Dame blitzing Joe Schmidt right into the middle, leaving the corner isolated. The ball is underthrown is the entire reason that you saw the pass interference call. Yeah, he grabbed onto the jersey, and he impended him from having a chance to go up and make a play. But the key was, if that ball is not underthrown, then Bryant's not working himself back, back into the corner. And by working himself back in the pull of the jersey, he could not have a chance to get to the football, and pretty easy call for the official. However, Coach Kelly begs to differ with that assessment. <laughs> it made sense to me, but I... Yeah, that's, that's the right call. Owls, first and goal. At the 10 yard line. It's Anderson in motion. They flip it instead to Thomas, who draws a crowd and is dropped for a loss there. Aquara arrived quickly. And except for that one run, Thomas has had very little room. That's an example where he's not going to be able to make a big play here. Get to the corner right here, pick up two or three, four yards. Just keep going to the corner there. Instead of trusting that, he's got two blockers out wide. Follow them to the corner and pick up three or four yards. Instead, you're dealing with elite athletes from Notre Dame. He puts his foot in the ground, tries to cut back. That might work against UMass, but that's not going to work tonight against Notre Dame. UMass, the one common opponent these teams have played. A much easier win for Notre Dame against the Minutemen. Walker delivers a shot that never had a chance. Very low for the tight end, Kip Patton. So it'll be third down and goal from the 12. And Chris, there's Joe, Joe uh, Smith, Joe Schmidt, along with Sheldon Day. If he had a chance to settle his feet down, he has a touchdown. The pressure, there's Schmidt, he gets off of Thomas, he comes to Walker. He just didn't have a, fans, a chance to, to get himself gathered. 
get balance and make a throw. If he did, that's a touchdown to Kip Patton, who had inside leverage there for a touchdown. See if Walker takes a shot at the end zone here on third and goal from the 12. He will over the middle in traffic. Catch made. Bryant dives. Touchdown. It's Brandon Shippen, excuse me, with his first touchdown catch of the season. That was really, really good coverage by Joe Schmidt. How did this ball get by Joe Schmidt and into the hands? Boy, just, he used his body to shield Joe Schmidt from the ball. Shippen at 5'11 and 191 pounds. I'm going to check to see if that knee touched. I think he's into the end zone. How in the world did he shield Joe Schmidt from the football? That's a remarkable effort. Shippen's a senior, has been around a long time, been through the lean times here, but did not have a touchdown catch this season until that one. And Walker, with the fastball, caps off a 94-yard touchdown drive. Eight plays in 254 as the Owls take the lead. They were rocked a little bit early as the Irish marched down for a quick touchdown, but Temple's responded with 10 points. Go back to the interception by Martin Oguike, who set it up. Big run we saw by Thomas. Couple big plays. Next thing you know, a 94-yard drive into the end zone for Temple. Brandon Shippen with a heck of a play thrown by P.J. Walker. because I feel like we got to take another look at this effort by Brandon Schipp and watch him keep Schmidt away from the football and in the left bicep somehow secures that football and then the presence of mind to stretch and get into the end zone. A heck of an individual effort from a guy who coming into tonight had three receptions. Yeah, he, 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 there he is out in the kickoff coverage team. He's been mostly a special teams guy. As you said, just, just his fourth catch, his first touchdown, the longest drive the Irish defense has given up this season. Sanders appears to be good to go. Is at the goal line and then knocks down at the 30-yard line. Here comes a flag on the return, so we'll check that marker before we go to the Bear, Chris Felica. Doing the return, holding, receiving team, number 18, 10-yard penalty. First day. Back the Irish up. Our Affleck trivia question, Mr. Felica. What do you got for us this week? In the spirit of the holiday today, sorry guys, we aren't able to go trick or treating this afternoon. Yeah. What popular Halloween treat was invented right here in Philadelphia? Does that count as, as football trivia? Now, or have now, you now, ventured this, outside the normal <laughs> lane? Now, here? this was not my question. I can't take full credit for it, but I like it. Spirit of the spirit of the day. Well, I know the cheesesteak was basically invented here. We've been enjoying those last couple yeah, of days. Not bad at all. Um, candy corn. Oh man, I think we've eaten everything that they have to offer here in the last 48 hours. <laughs> Irish, uh, we have Irish behind for the first time now and backed up. And Kaiser flips it near side. Tory Hunter makes the catch. It is knocked down along the far sidelines there. All right, Mr. Felica. Let's not waste any time. What is the answer? We will answer the Affleck trivia question now. And Mr. Fowler, you are correct. Wow. It was candy corn. Are you kidding me? 1880s by George Renninger of the Philadelphia-based Wonderly Candy Did Company. Did you cheat on that? I, no. But it's, uh, that would, if you think Halloween candy, that's the first one that comes to mind. So I'm, I'm 0 for the football questions this year. Can I go back to 35 million pounds produced annually? That was impressive. We get you into that candy category. They, they just delivered some to us here. And you, your money. <laughs> Here's a completion near side. A very short gain by Hunter because that's a strong tackle there. And the Owls defense is starting to show a little moxie. They got the key red zone turnover. And this is more like Temple football now. Yeah, it sure is. And on, on, it's going to set up a third down. Avery Williams does a really good job of just getting off of a block and making a play in the open field. And it, this is what again, this is what they've been known for. You wondered, could they do it against Notre Dame, against this kind of skill? And a heck of a play, a heck of an effort there by Avery Williams, who's no more of a, really, as a blitzer than making plays out in the field. Third and a long yard. Brosice. Nope, it's a fake, and Kaiser's off and running in a seam. The quarterback in the Owls' territory winning a foot race. Touchdown, Irish. 79 yards. Not what he's known for, but a huge play puts Notre Dame back in front. 
I keep warning you that Deshaun Kaiser is going to run the football. And when the numbers are right, he's going to remind you of his athletic ability. He's a guy who played baseball at a high level, played basketball at a high level. He's a great athlete. And he, they saved that zone read for crucial moments in the game. And that was a big play, obviously, on third down. He's a guy who had gained 251 rushing yards this season. That's his fourth rushing touchdown. That stuns a Temple defense that just doesn't give up big runs like that normally. Well, in your third and short, you've got eight guys crowding the line of scrimmage, expecting pro size up the middle. But he's reading one guy. And this is right here to the outside, Finch. He's just going to make this read. Watch how he collapsed down. And then he picks up a great block. Look at all the defenders coming down. Look at the running room, and he's got a receiver to make this block right here. There's nobody left. Everybody's on pro size. Chris Brown, Brown does just enough there against Sean Chandler, and then he's off to the races. Anticipating pro size. Look at his eyes on his read. Finch collapses down. Everybody thinks pro size has it. And he pulls it out and shows his speed out in the open field. It's 6'4", 230 pounds. By 37 yards, that is the longest run Temple has allowed this season. Brian Kelly, ecstatic, a little smile for his quarterback. But you know that's got a that's got to gall Phil Snow. He told me he'll sometimes concede a first down even on third and short to avoid exactly that, depending on the field position. And, and that not to mention, they just took the lead. They just went up 10 to 7, and, you, and the crowd's back into the game. And then they get Notre Dame's offense to third down after that great play on second down by Avery Williams, and that is a punch to the gut. So the touchback, and we get a chance to check in with Cassidy Hubbard for a studio update. Thanks, Chris. Everyone talks about Houston's offense. How about their defense? William Jackson, 55-yard pick six, 27-0 Cougars. Another American team trying to remain perfect. This game over on ESPN2. And on ESPN, in the Big Ten, Mitch Leidner, 24-yard TD run. The Gophers, they've now taken a 23-21 lead in third. Back to you guys. Cassidy, thank you. I want to start for Deshaun Kaiser in his sixth start for the Irish. Responsible for all but seven of Notre Dame's yards so far. Walker looking at a first down throw. It's Christopher who dives across the 35. It's a first down. I really think that last drive took the weight off of P.J. Walker. You're talking about a guy that played as a freshman and played well. And last year, he forced some issues. I think he tried to do maybe a little bit too much, had you know, a lot more interceptions, 15 interceptions. And he comes into this game tonight knowing that he needed to play well. And I think the throw for the touchdown in the last drive to Shippen, maybe some of the pressure off of him. And now he can relax and just play the game. Walker under pressure delivers high and wide and he's knocked down hard by Sheldon Day after the throw. It's a great point. It was he, they were two and ten when he was a true freshman starter and he took his lumps much, much like he took on this play. Yeah, Sheldon Day just goes right by Ahmed. Ahmed. I mean, this like he's not even there. I think he said he comes back for his sophomore year and he doubles the number of interceptions. He threw 15 as a sophomore adjusting to the spread. The spread, the tempo, they, they thought, hey, the new trend is trying to be these like a TCU or a Baylor. Everybody's doing it. Let's try to do it as well with our quarterback. Didn't fit. They went back to their kind of offense this year it just throws the ball low and Thomas was kind of waiting for it the screen I guess Walker felt not well set up no he, he was he didn't have a chance really to set it up and it was also on Wallow number 17 was out there and uh, he just threw it into the feet there of Thomas Notre Dame doing a really good job on on third downs of getting pressure on Walker he knows he has a little over two seconds to get this football out of his hands and try to find an open receiver, especially now the way Notre Dame can, can blitz. Now it's three of six on the third down tonight. Clock to four minutes and seven seconds. The play clock to 25 seconds. Start the play clock with my signal. Thank you. Tracy Jones said, let's, let's add two seconds more back to the game clock. So the Owls trying to keep this drive alive. A 
Irish are showing pressure. It's Jalen Smith who backs out. High snap. Walker delivers near side, and that time Bryant could not make a difficult catch. Cole Luke was in coverage. They were short of the first down anyway. No, and again, Sheldon Day, they're moving him around to different spots, and that time it's that entire series. Ahmed, 75, the left guard, had to deal with him, and he used the same move every time. Little swim, little swim move, but with his quickness at the point of attack, Ahmed just not having much of a chance to slow him down in that pass rush. You give Sheldon Day an idea of what's coming. If he knows it's a pass, you, you've got some trouble. Owls get one first down, but cannot reclaim momentum after Kaiser's touchdown run. And now, Sarzik kind of takes off. It's a rugby punt. And the ball's bouncing around, and wisely, Sanders just let it go. He had a notion there, but the Owls will down it at the 15-yard line. 48 yards on that rugby punt. Tuesday night, Herbie will join Reese Davis and a large cast for the exclusive reveal of the first college football top 25 rankings presented by Allstate, 7 Eastern from Bristol, also streaming live on the Watch ESPN app. Get a sense of which way the committee, which is now down to 12 members, Pat Hayden, the USC athletic director resigning from the committee this week. Doctors orders. They want him to fly less. So yeah. it's down to 12 now. Interesting. Just with a couple teams, you would think would be up at the top with JT Barrett and what, what happened last night. Seth Russell, the injury. We we'll have to wait to see how that may have an impact on Baylor. They're off this week. Both those teams happen to have a bye this week. Inside of four minutes till halftime as the Irish try to add to their lead. Pro size nowhere to run. Strung out well and Brought down by Sean Champ Chandler in the sophomore corner. But this this Temple football team, who's down right now, 14 to 10, really prides themselves on, on being a tough team and a second half team. They outscore their opponents 137 to 29 in a second half. And you have to believe if they could get in at halftime down 14 to 10, the way this game early was starting to trend, they'd feel pretty good about being competitive in this game for four quarters. Kaiser pressured and delivers a screen. Butler trying to get loose. And he's got loose. Carlisle out near midfield. So they finally go to one of their trademark plays, that little slip screen to Carlisle. Yeah, they, they have so many different weapons. Some great blocks by this Notre Dame offensive line. They set it up. The ball gets out of his hands quick. Now you're just relying on being an athlete. But look at the blocking. Ronnie Stanley picks up a nice block. Looked like Steve Elmer, number 79, came across field and picked up a nice block that actually seemed to spring it loose and opened it up for Amir Carlisle to pick up big yards. Hunter, far side. Down inside the 45-yard line. The Irish now have an effective drive here trying to build the lead before the break. Again, those are run-pass options where he sees one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. He's got a, one guy that can block. It's actually two-on-two. -two. One, one receiver will block, and then the other receiver, when he throws it out there, he's got to make somebody miss. You see it again all over the country. And that's recognition that time by Kaiser. He just came off of the run play and threw it out to the receiver. Second and one. Kaiser takes a shot over the middle. Intended target was Elise Jones. There's a flag down in the secondary. He's a speedy tight end who can get vertical quickly. Yeah, Sean Chandler. Pass interference. Defense. Number three. Automatic first down. Sean Chandler a couple times tonight just getting beaten and has had to grab onto the jersey. Big tight end who can run and Jones. Chad, a chance to be a big play with Jones' size and speed. He holds onto that ball and lowers his shoulder into Alex Wells' safety, but Chandler wrapped, grabbed onto that jersey. And the third time tonight, the Owls secondary has been flagged. Ball moves to the 30. Kaiser with a pump fake. Takes off again. Tries to get past Matikevich, but the top tackler on the Owls breaks him down after a five-yard gain. Two minutes to play in the half. Outside of that throw that Kaiser made where he kind of put it up where it was intercepted down in the red zone You know for a guy making his sixth start Doesn't he just feel like th there's great command just a great presence in the way he runs this football team Again, he is learning with each series as young as he is in this system But when I was talking to him earlier. He said, you know, I, I, I 
last year when I sat out, I, I really took the time to understand protection, understand coverage, and it's really paid off this year now that he's had a chance to play for Malik Zaire. And second and six in the pocket, delivers a near side throw. Excellent timing there as Fuller was hit by Young, and it's incomplete. That's well timed by Young, they put out in the field. Great athlete who's excited to have this chance to go up against Fuller. Maybe gets there just a, a smidge early, but super, super slow mo. But in real speed, that's just a great play. Out to the field, he's got a break on the ball and knock that football away or be physical with uh, with Will Fuller when he's in the air. It's exactly what he did. Owls have limited the Philly homegrown product in the first half. He has three catches, but only for 22 yards. Now, remember the last time they got him into third down down here, they got pressure and he put it up into the air and it was intercepted. Let's see if they can get after him again. With nobody in the backfield with him, he'd better get rid of the football in a hurry. Yeah, you're right, Kirk. The Owls spot that. They did get back, so no penalty. And now they do bring the heat on Kaiser, who backpedals and throws into traffic. But this one's complete. First down, Brown battling down to the 12-yard line. You know how he likes to play basketball? That's kind of like a, a fadeaway jumper right there. That's a nice fadeaway Swish. jumper. <laughs> Swish. Watch him. He knows, just like you and I are saying, I got to get the ball out of my hands. He kind of baited him, waited, waited, and then flipped it. He knew he was going to get hit. He's waiting for Chris Brown to make his move and get separation. Threw it and anticipated, threw it away from Chandler, who was in coverage, and threw it at the last second as he was falling back. There's the arm strength from Deshaun Kaiser. They get 15 yards on third and six, and Kelly... Spending a timeout now again one of those red zone situations that can be huge in deciding the victory tonight Capital one halftime report John Saunders Mark May and Mac Brown highlights updates from this Saturday Notre Dame has gained 253 Yards in the first half against an Owls defense that gives up only 307 per game. Empty backfield again. Procise in the slot. Kaiser has time. Still looking. And just lobs it into the crowd. Reaches the first row. <laughs> you get outside of that, that tackle box area, you can throw it up to the scoreboard if you want. There's his night tonight, 134 yards, 110 on the ground. Of course, the big one for a touchdown. We knew that his legs would be a factor tonight. We knew that he would be involved against this kind of defense. And what they do, run the football tonight seven times to get to the 110 yards. But a balanced attack for Brian Kelly. 119 as a team on the ground, 134 through the air here so far in the first half. Minute 17 to halftime, and Kelly wants to see great decision-making from his quarterback in this situation Kaiser again has time looks end zone incomplete another crossing route very well defended against Hunter and it'll be third and ten can rules defense Force a field goal attempt. Will Fuller all the way up at the top. They give him a cushion. Kaiser looks that direction, now throws into the end zone. Intercepted on the carom. It's Matikiewicz with a second red zone pick by the Owls tonight. He's got five interceptions as a linebacker. He leads the conference in that department besides leading his team in tackles. Yeah, he's a ball hawk, including everything else that he brings to the table. But Chris, Tavon Young, number one, makes the play. Medikevich is the guy who gets the interception. But I, I showed you where Will Fuller is going to be. Watch him get his hand right there. He does a good job of keeping his shoulders away from the pass interference call. This will be a great look. He's staring him down. Young knows they're looking him up on third down. Gets around him. He works around Fuller. Gets the left hand in to knock it loose. Up in the air. And there is 
Tyler Matakevich making the play for the interception. Red zone, how would they do? Second turnover down in the red zone. And Redhead with the beard just has a knack for making <laughs> plays. And now Walker just trying to stay alive as the Irish swarm him in the final minute. And you wonder if they'll just play it conservative after that breakdown of protection. Yeah, I told you, 14 to 10, with the way they are known as a second-half team, you, you, you got to be pretty happy about that. Remember, Notre Dame won the toss. They elected to take the football, so yep. you know, Temple will have the ball. I, I'm so impressed talking to him on Thursday, sitting down. You could talk to him for hours about football. Guy just loves the game. Yeah, there's a second-down run and a short gain for... And Thomas, who spun down at the 30, they spent two early timeouts on defense. I think you're right. They, they just get into the locker room and, and really accomplish your goal. You, you, you're going to make it yep. into the second half with a chance to win. Anybody who comes into school with a 16-inch neck as a freshman <laughs> and develops that baby into a 20, let me say that again, 20-inch neck as a senior, it says it all right there. He's been doing his shrugs. <laughs> no doubt. But the Irish on Halloween night lead it by four. Capital One Halftime Report coming up, and Heather will have a visit with Brian Kelly right after these messages. Welcome back to Philly, ready for the second half on Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Walmart, and this presentation to the American Athletic Conference on ESPN. Well, the Irish have almost a 2-1 to one edge in total yards, but two red zone interceptions keeping the Owls close. They'll get the football to begin the third quarter. And welcome back, Chris Fowler, along with Kirk Herbstreet. If you told Matt Rule you're going to have 25 rush yards in the first half, but you're going to be within four, he'd probably take that, Kirk. He'd probably be surprised. Uh, I, you know, I think it was a great football game in the first half. It looked like Notre Dame was just maybe going to... <laughs> <laughs> Back in here, Kirk. These, these are some friends of mine from the uh, come on, fellas, that from the e really East, Eastern State Penitentiary, <laughs> which we visited last night. You, they got you. you. You got them. Congratulations. <laughs> oh. All right. Good to see you. Yeah. All right. Well, what's been a little scary for, as we were saying, for the for the <laughs> Temple offense is not to have that running game. Wouldn't you agree? You, you had to be a little bit surprised. They're surprised. You're surprised. Yeah, I'm you glad okay? I didn't go last night. Uh, <laughs> 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 we we went to um, went to the haunted penitentiary. Th thank you very much, fellas. We appreciate you. It, it was it was a good time. A haunted penitentiary. Okay, <laughs> come back here. <laughs> You, 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 you were gotten. You forgot. Oh, right you, you got me. All right. Couple of friends. All right. Well, oh. we'll get back to some football here. But it's Halloween. Are we on we gotta TV have right a little... now? Are we, are we, is this like a, you're taping something for later? Are we on? Are we on right now? It's not the goof reel. It's <laughs> oh, great. It's live. Woo! <laughs> uh, Tyler Newsom that put it away for the Irish. <laughs> oh, and man. it's deep in the end zone. Here is the Pacific Life game summary. The first half. Calm That's, down. Get the heart rate yeah. down. All get right, going. Let's get back to some football here. Like I said uh, before, <laughs> whatever just happened, Notre Dame started strong. Deshaun Kaiser just in command early in the game, making great decisions. You see 244 running and throwing, and then a couple turnovers. Gave Temple some life. They cranked up some pressure in the red zone. They came up with two turnovers. One of them near the end of the half led to eventually a long drive over 90 yards into the end zone. A great effort there by Shippen to get to give actually Temple the lead before Kaiser got out on that long option run. But we've got a football game here. Four-point game with Notre Dame up and Temple known as a second-half team. Matikevich making that pick on the great play by Tavon Young at the end of the half. Now we'll see if the Owls offense can settle down. Now uh, they give a run look and the completion to Brian on the far side. A little trickery on the opening play of the third quarter in the Owls in Notre Dame territory. Well, they give the zone read look, and you've got to respect Walker's ability to run the football. And, you know, you see Auburn do this quite a bit where you get outside and run. And, you know, I, I think Russell did not anticipate that ball being thrown. He, he, I think he was surprised. He was running with Brian, but event, by the time he realized the ball was in the air, it was already past him. He's lucky to catch up with Bryant, knock him out of bounds. 28 yards, Bryant with four catches tonight. Freshman from Tampa. Once again, Jahat Thomas is stopped behind the line.
and the top running back and a guy has been a, a real force for this offense but Sheldon Day wrapped them up quickly yeah, Sheldon Day and Isaac, Isaac Rochelle who again had a big first half he is just so athletic and strong goes right through Leon Johnson that right tackle number 53 watch him push right through him on the far right just extends uses that speed and Sheldon Day and Rochelle both in there to make that play just nothing Thomas could do second and 13 Irish bring the pressure again Walker delivers Brian that time couldn't make the catch let me check in with Heather Cox. Chris, I love Matt Rule's message to his team at halftime. He looked him in the eye and said, enjoy it. If you didn't think you belonged before, now you do. As for adjustments in the second half, we've done a great job passing. We must do a better job running the ball, getting on the edges and running. If that means being creative, be patient, whatever it takes to establish that running game so we have a little bit more balance. As for their center, Kyle Friend, he is struggling with that left knee injury. He's going to try to go, but Matt Rule said he was doubtful. Well, for now, he's in there, Heather. Snapping the ball on third and 13. Walker steps up against that three-man rush. Lost the ball. The Owls will retain possession, but Sheldon Day just overpowered the O-line for the first sack tonight. Well, both the, we said at the, the first series, Dawkins, the left tackle, and Johnson, the right tackle, are going to have their hands full, and both of them led... Both the pass rushers, Day on one side, Trombetti on the other, who they bring in on third down. And the beauty of that, when you can get pressure with those front four, you sit back and play zone, and you don't have to play all out man-to-man -man coverage. So the defensive line, again, just too much for Temple on third down. Third sack of the season for Day. The Irish only have 13 as a team. Stars take another rugby punt. It is fielded. Sanders in traffic, takes a big hit, spins away, but it'll be dropped at the 13-yard line. So the Irish offense, pretty good first half if you could take away those two red zone turnovers. But on the season now, Kirk, they have four picks thrown in the red zone, a total of five turnovers. You go back the last two years, no team in football has more red zone turnovers than the Irish, 11. It's, it's crazy to think, and I think when people hear that initially, they think, well, Everett Colson maybe had a, a lot to do with that. But no, they had six last year, already five this year. One of them was on Kaiser tonight. The other one was just a great play by Tavon Young near the end of the first half. Precise. Test the middle and barrels forward for six. Phil Snow, the defensive coordinator from Temple, pretty clear that he had a message for his team, and that was we are going to swarm number 20, C.J. Precise. In the first half, you know, he, he only had a nine or ten yards. Didn't have a whole lot to do with the, the Notre Dame offensive attack. It opened it up for Kaiser in the running game, but Prosai's a very quiet first half. He's got it again. Tries to make a man miss. Does get around the corner. Prosai shows the speed, and he got around Sean Chandler. Sophomore corners had a, a tough night so far. Yeah, that, that was actually a great little block there by Chris Brown that helped him get to the corner. Picks right there. Nice block right there by Alex Wells, and then he has the strength to this stiff arm. He gives it to Sean Chandler and scurries around that corner to pick up even more yards for that first down. But a nice block again by Chris Brown. These receivers are blocking tonight for Notre Dame. Rosas with just 20 yards on his 11 rushes tonight. There's a first down completion on the far side. It's a short gain to Chris Brown. Temple doing everything they can to mix up the looks with a veteran defense. You know, they're, they're not going to sit in the same defense. Phil Snow has one of the more complicated defenses you'll see. He spent a lot of time out in the, uh, in the Pac-12. Spent time at Arizona State, UCLA, in the NFL. He's lucky to have a lot of guys that have played a lot of football for him here at Temple. Hunter on the end around near the first down marker at the 35. Matt Rule was actually a, a GA for Snow at UCLA and now, of course, is his boss. But you're right, 20 years out west at various schools for Snow. You know, when you have a complicated steam, oh, here we go, quick snap. And third and short, Kaiser with the sneak. It'll be close. Needed to make it to the 35. May have just gotten it. Yeah, they got it. Kaiser, whose 75-yard touchdown run, you wonder, is that the longest 
for a quarterback in school history. No, Blair Keel had an 80-yard touchdown on a fake punt. So asterisk, right. fake punt. Right. I remember Tony Rice on a, on an option play getting out on USC in a big game in the Coliseum, and I, I thought that was a long run. But Blair Keel on a what do you say? A, a, a fake, fake punt? punt? Yeah. Kaiser on fake. Looks downfield. Fuller in traffic. Leaping attempt broken up. And there were a lot of owls in the neighborhood of number seven, and Tavon Young was again making a big play. Uh, again, man, this kid Tavon Young, the sophomore, living on the edge out there with Will Fuller, who tries to go up and make a play, but Young sees the ball the entire time. Here's a great look. Watch number one. Doesn't bite. Well, actually bites a little bit, but has the speed to catch up to the ball. It recognizes the ball's a bit underthrown. He goes up and high points it and just knocks it away. Great coverage again by number one. Tried the same thing, didn't he? Tried to bat the ball back yeah. to a teammate. He did. what worked at the end of the half. Play action on second down. Kaiser rolling out, is flushed, gets away, and makes something of it. Gets across the 40. It'll be third and three. Matikiewicz forced him out. And there, there is the, the development there and maturity. Nate Smith takes that away. The, the route that he wanted to throw out in the flat. He had his tight end that time in a flat wisher. And, Nate Smith took it away, and instead of trying to force it in there, he picks up some yards to give him a, a really good chance here on third down. You need three. Kaiser takes off again, leans for another conversion on third down. Wells stopped him. No fumble. Ball ruled down, and they'll move the sticks. Matikevich is out there grabbing the ball on the ground. He's grabbing ankles. He's grabbing anything he can to slow down Notre Dame. But again, Kaiser's ability as a runner, yep. crucial on third down. And 14 carries the last few games, and tonight already 10 carries for those 122 yards. And it just a big factor in what they're trying to do, especially since Temple's taken away pro size. Exactly. He has 122 yards, and Prosize has 20 on the ground in this game. Hunter gets blocks on the edge, and Torrey Hunter cuts back into the secondary. Down inside the 15. Another big play for the Irish offense. We talked about the Notre Dame receivers blocking. Hunter does a good job in the open field, but watch the blocking out here by Chris Brown and Will Fuller. Look at these guys battling right there. And because of that effort by Brown and Fuller, that's what created the crease. Playing fast after the 40-yard gain. And keeper for a short gain this time. When guys like Brian Kelly, Chris, when they see receivers willing to block like that, you're going to get the football thrown to you. Look at this. Chris Brown getting really physical. Will Fuller as well. And that, that created a running lane out there. Irish back in the red zone. And Kaiser has time. Escapes. Has room. And muscles down inside the five. A big collision at the end with Matikiewicz. But it's a first down for Notre Dame. Now you got to love this guy, the, kind of the moxie that he has. He knew the entire time he was going to hold on to it. The offensive line gives him all day to be able to assess things. But here he is, lowers his shoulder. He's heard all week about number eight, Matikiewicz. Lowers his shoulder at 230 and runs right over him. Matikiewicz tried to grab the ball at the end of the again, play. Again, he's, he's grabbing everything. You better hold on tight down there with number <laughs> eight. For the Irish now. A chance to stretch the lead. Yeah, they're, they're counting numbers right now. Who's committed to the line of scrimmage? Play clock counting down, too. Yeah. Kelly gets a timeout just in time to avoid the five-yard penalty. Uh, he, he's fired up because you're getting a little bit too cute down there inside the five-yard line. Let's go. He said, we got to go. Run the play. This is your studio update. Michigan quarterback Jake Rudolph left with an injury. So back up Wilton Spate in at QB and gets the J.U. Chesson 12-yard TD score. They got the two-point conversion. So it's 29-26 Michigan over on ESPN. First and goal here, Cassidy. Eight minutes to play in this third quarter. Bishop marched 83 yards so far in 11 plays. 
quarterback run game down here. War flip it in the end zone for incomplete. They were battling for the ball. It was Sean Chandler trying to break up the pass from Robinson. You know, they try a little bit of a ball fake to get the linebackers up. And a pretty good effort right there by Chandler, who has had a couple pass interference called against him. That time he avoids it, gets his hand in to knock it away. But I love the little ball fake to suck the linebackers up and then give, gave him a little bit of a, bit of a better chance in the throwing lane to go right over top of him. Still think you can run Kaiser down here. Brosize hit immediately. He'll lose yardage back to the five. Matikevich combining with Matt Ioannidis, one of the senior leaders of that defensive front. Yeah. Ioannidis made the play. You're so used to saying Matikevich. He's right here. He actually just does a good job of getting off the block here. Look at that. Look at the quickness there to be able to get off of that block by Steve Elmer and make that play. Prosize five times tonight has been dropped for a loss. So it's third and goal. It's a big play here in this game. Kaiser rolling, looks and just throws it to the corner of the end zone. Out of bounds. Robinson went up, couldn't come down with it. And the Owls rise up again near the goal line fourth down yeah you know, Corey robinson is always a factor down here i want to see if he caught this football and did he get a foot even remotely close I, it looked like he may have dragged one of his feet no he touched he touched his right foot down clearly out of bounds but did hold on to the football so two incompletions for the irish sandwiched around a precise loss and after first and goal at the three, they can't find the end zone. Here's Justin Yoon for a chip shot from 23. And he knocks it through, but consider that a victory for the Temple defense. The deficit still just seven after the 80-yard drive. Last night to the House of Horrors. It's actually an authentic penitentiary where Al Capone, among others, was actually in prison. Very scary place populated by some very scary actors. Sorry, I missed that experience. That must you have got been a little taste tonight. A little earlier. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. That'll be great. <laughs> Fun times. Seems that folks are enjoying it based on the yeah, feedback. Yeah, that's great. That's great. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, I heard you were yelling back at these these guys as they were trying to scare you. You'd be a Mr. Tough Guy. They, huh? they, they weren't very scared by me, I promise you. Loose them the kick, and it's once again gonna be a touchback. The flag is down. The ball will go out of bounds. Kick out of bounds. Yeah. <laughs> Bounce out of bounds just before the pylon. A minor over on ESPN on Monday. Colts visiting the Panthers. Cam Newton and the undefeated Carolina Panthers. Served by Applebee's. Countdown begins at 6. Kickoff at 8.15. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, from Carolina. So the Owls now will start from their 35-yard line, having again done a pretty good job in the red zone. The Irish scored in their opening possession. It was a Kaiser touchdown run, but the other three trips to the end zone, interception, interception, and the short field goal. That's what's kept them in this football game. Only down a touchdown. Can they get Jahan Thomas, their junior running back, going? Said it's a first down throw. Catch made by Shippen, who had the touchdown earlier. He cannot slip a tackle, gained of two. If you're a Notre Dame fan, how refreshing is that to see a safety come up and make a play in the open field? That's been an area that, whether it's been Redfield or Farley or Shoemate at times this year, they, they, they've played well, they've played well, and then they've, they've, they've had a, a bust, you know, against USC. How many times did you see them? SC would make a throw underneath, and guys would come up to make plays, and they would slip by those safeties. There's nobody left. That time, nice effort there by Matthias Farley. Irish showing pressure off the edge here, and then they motion Thomas out of the backfield on second and eight. Walker gets it out quickly, batted down. Michelle was right in the face of the quarterback. And it'll be third and eight. Well, he's getting the ball out of his hands, and he's going right exactly where that blitz was coming from. Michelle has had a night tonight. 
Farley comes near here at the bottom. He's picked up, but look at that. Look at the surge. Every single time that line is being pushed back into the face of P.J. Walker. You mentioned the USC game. Rochelle missed a tackle that turned into a long touchdown run. He got mad at himself, and after that was was possessed in that game as well. He's off to a, another great performance here. You put him and Day on this defensive line? They're a handful. He only rushed three on third down. Walker delivers far side. That's just a bad throw because he had Robbie Anderson open. And Walker would like to have that throw back. Fourth down. Yeah, they, they were going after Kavari Russell, who had a couple guys that he had to deal with. He had Kip Patton, a tight end, kind of in the middle, who works his way to the outside. And that's where Russell started to go to try to pick up number 80. And you're right, Robbie Anderson was kind of left alone there. And Walker could not execute there on third down. So the Owls defense will have to go back on the field after just allowing that 80 yard field goal drive as Starzik has another short boot. Sanders comes up this time, takes it on the fly and is knocked down after a short return at the 33. Midway third quarter in Philly. Irish back on offense up by a touchdown. Appreciate the All-State Saturday Night Football bus here in Philly. You can have the All-State It's Good Sweepstakes for a chance to win $100,000, plus a VIP trip to the All-State Sugar Bowl and the National Championship game, as well as weekly prizes. National Championship trophy presented by Dr. Pepper goes to the winner of the second championship game of the playoff era in Glendale, Arizona, January 11th. Irish, of course, very much in consideration for the playoff. If they can keep rolling, trying to build in a seven-point lead here. From their 32. Kaiser fakes the run. Now loops it downfield to Pro Size. And closely covered there. And a fly comes in again. Stefan Marshall, the linebacker, didn't get his head around and was flagged. Defense, number six, automatic first down. Fourth time for this defense, Kirk, tonight. And a wheel route out of the backfield. Marshall, a linebacker, has to stay with him. He's there. He's with him. But again, another one of those cases where the ball is underthrown. The receiver trying to work back. And he's raising his arms wondering what the heck's going on. But when the ball is underthrown, and if you don't turn your head and find the ball and work yourself back to the ball and you're impending the receiver to get back, they're going to call pass interference. All four of their major penalties tonight have been pass interference. To the Irish with a first down at the 47. Rosice in the slot to the right of Kaiser. He's got time. Downfield had a man wide open. It was Carlisle and a flag in the secondary again. Back at the 41 yard line. Officials may be pointing in Notre Dame's Tennessee direction. Security. Offense, number 82, 15-yard penalty, first down. I think Wisher, the tight end, is flagged. Well, I don't know about this. <laughs> these officials tonight. This, this is interesting. Wisher working downfield. He, he's just running his round. He, he lowered his shoulder, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, I, I'm Usually offensive pass interference, it's, it's very obvious where you're extending your arms, you're shoving. He just kind of lowered his, his... Would have been sort of hard to avoid the collision there, wouldn't yeah, it? Have? Yeah, yeah. 15-yard penalty moves the ball all the way back to the 32. Rosice slips the tackle, knocked down short of the 40. Just to try to make it a more manageable second down play. With Procise, who's had 500 yard games and just needed 78 yards tonight for a thousand, really been held in check. Only 24 yards in his 13 carries. It's been Kaiser doing the damage with his feet. Now he's moving around, making checks on defense. Kaiser is flushed out a flag comes down as he looks downfield and now just scoots out of bounds across the 45 that flag is in the the holding area yeah there was a there was an interesting exchange on the notre dame sidelines i don't know if brian kelly's First fired up look at this tripping offense number 72. he was fired up with this is second day. one of his assistants or one of the members of the notre dame staff 
I think talking to an official I don't want to speculate but I, I think that was after a pass interference call and I think that's what got him fired up I don't know if he appreciated somebody other than himself really going after the officials Brian has no problem doing that himself but apparently doesn't want well, others over there doing it. when you're the guy yeah I mean, when you're the guy you're allowed to kind of work the official over but you don't want somebody else doing that same thing Irish had a first down of their 47 after another major penalty they're back at the 24 at second and 33 off the pressure it's a screen Procise weaves his way back out to the 37 third down and just a, very long it's just a bizarre series here you know we had that offensive pass interference call that was questionable on on Wisher and, and you know we saw what happened there with with Brian Kelly and one of his members from his staff they've been pushed back 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 and now third and long usually we see screens and draws in these kind of situations well Notre Dame fans know that the killer instinct has been a little bit lacking in this Notre Dame team putting teams away when they have a chance to do so isn't something they've done a great job at and another case in point tonight mistakes perhaps killing this series Kaiser on third and 19 loops it far side catches made but way short of the first yeah. down is Brown and that's as much about field position there if you're Notre Dame as anything I mean you're, you're facing second what was it 33 yes and, and you know you, you move along a little bit you get the ball to midfield and it's not necessarily for Brian Kelly about picking up the first down as much as it is trying to push his tempo offense back inside deeper deeper into their own territory he's still talking about whatever went on there with uh, somebody on his staff that was an aggressive move by Kelly yeah, toward yeah. that staff member wasn't it yes it was Chandler trying to make something happen gets away from one man but is knocked down at the 23 the owls have had poor field position throughout the night they're number one in that department in the country but but not tonight Goodyear flying overhead everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours Goodyear more driven the official aero provider of Saturday night football their own 39 that's the average starting field position for Temple this season big part of their success but they have been pinned back a lot tonight they certainly have and the onus now on PJ Walker in this offense remember we've not seen Thomas an electrifying running back have a lot of room to work with tonight. Tries to bounce it outside. This time Thomas does get the corner and knifes into the secondary across the 35. You know, their, their thing tonight was we want they wanted to try to get him to the edge. Picks up a nice block right here by Shippen, which helps him be able to get out to that second level. There's the speed right there. If he can just get a little bit of room to work with, you're talking about a guy that can get out in the open field and accelerate to pick up big yards. We just, Notre Dame's played so well up front, he just hasn't had a lot of room to be able to do that. You asked him, you know, why did he born number five? He said because he was a young kid watching Reggie Bush, and he's got some of Reggie's yeah. fast twitch explosiveness. But this time the quarterback keeps it, and Walker's got another first down at the 46. There's a great call there, zone read. We've talked about how Notre Dame has mixed it, mixed it in with Kaiser. Here he does a good job of reading Joe Schmidt, collapses down. Watch, watch 38 coming in here from your right. He collapses down. He gets outside of him after a nice read. And after a big run by Thomas, the Notre Dame defense is thinking about more about Thomas. Great time that time by Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator, to go to that zone read and open it up for Walker. Thomas, a first down carry, and they're beginning to create some creases now in the running game into Irish territory at the 47. Thomas had a shoulder injury in the opener against Penn State. They haven't run him a lot this year. They, he's so valuable as a quarterback. You don't want him to take shots, but that's going to change tonight. I it, think. it had, to, it really has to, and, and they want to see him run more like he did as a freshman. Thomas again hit hard, just met by Jalen Smith right at the marker, but they will move the chains. Well, Paid Jaylen, the price that time. Jalen Smith is two, 240 pounds, and he's got some fast twitch of his own. Thomas at about 188 he feels boom feels that right there that is a great play but it is a first down enough yards for the first down 
Thomas said he didn't really feel right every week until about Thursday. And he, right. At Buck 88, taking all these big hits. Own read, zone read. Think play action, zone read, too. Pressure up the middle. Schmidt after the quarterback. They throw it short here, and Bryant escapes momentarily and is able to make something of it. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. It was hard work to do it. It felt like an eight-yard gain, and he's back to the line of scrimmage. That was a heroic effort just to be able to do that. That play did not have much of a chance from the beginning. Notre Dame getting after Walker. He would love to be able to hold on to that a little bit longer, but Joe Schmidt just kind of lowered the boom, timed up his blitz perfectly. Temple coaches were saying what Brian Van Gorder does well as a coordinator is take away your favorite runs, your go-to running plays. They've pretty much done a good job of that tonight again. You got a little thing going with his own read right now, though. Thomas stutter step can't get away from that guy again Jalen Smith body slams him at the 40 It'll be third and long in the final 30 seconds of the third quarter You go back to when Walker was a freshman and he started to play about a fifth or sixth game they, they ran zone read he averaged about 10 carries a game last year It was the numbers were down and this year because of the shoulder injury to Penn State the numbers are down But now that he's starting to feel healthy They want to see him have a willingness to take off and use his legs when he can and maybe we'll see more of that here in this fourth quarter because it feels like a little bit of a, a rhythm there between him and Thomas running the football. A lot of teams do the four fingers in the air, but Temple backs it up. They've been an excellent fourth quarter team. Rule wanted to be close in the fourth quarter. They will, but a third down to convert to keep this potentially game time drive alive. End of three in Philly. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Couple close finishes. First in the ACC, Duke down 24-19 until Thomas Surf runs it in from one yard out with six seconds to go to take the lead. Miami returned to kickoff, but it was called back. Minnesota down three, two seconds to go. Mitch Leiter stuffed on the goal line. Michigan hangs on the win, 29-26. Chris Herbie. We had a painful loss against the Spartans, of course. That'll ease maybe a little bit of it with a goal line stand. Beginning of the fourth quarter, Owls need six to keep on going in Notre Dame territory. Thomas hit, working hard, but he's going to be short. But Elijah Shoemaker came yeah. flying in, Kirk. Now it's fourth and four. Yeah, Elijah Shoemaker that time did come in in a hurry. Robbie Anderson didn't have much of a chance at all. And Matt, Matt Rule looking out there and saying, we've we're in pretty good field position here, plus territory. Defense is playing pretty well, and he's waving it. Let's go. Let's, let's go for it here. Well, his offense will like that decision, and so will the fans. Owls four of seven on fourth down this year. You're either going to go with a quick pass here to get the ball out fast, because Notre Dame's probably going to come after you, or that zone read that's been effective with either Whip Walker keeping it or giving to Thomas. Walker back, throws near side, caught! Anderson dragged down inside the 10, but a fourth down, first down. Russell saved the touchdown, but the Owls threaten. Well, you have to love Matt Rule's decision here. This is just their, this is their DNA. Best against best. Robbie Anderson against Kavari Russell. Who's going to win? A great throw by Walker and just enough separation there by Robbie Anderson to get away from Russell to pick up a huge first down. 31 yards, just the second catch for the Owls leading receiver tonight. Two tight end look. Two way fullback linebacker. Sharga in front of Thomas who slips as he makes a cut and will lose back to the nine Gonna be tough sledding in there to get into an eye formation and bring all those white jerseys into the box I think you're gonna have to get multiple receivers in and I think you got to get on the edge with Walker because of his athletic ability And you don't want to wait till third down to do that Just too talented in the trenches there to run inside on Notre Dame Walker has time, delivers a fire dart to the end zone, bobble incomplete. That was Bryant at the end line. Nosey could have, should have had that, couldn't control the pass. Third and goal. Watch this look. This is a beautiful view here by Walker. Receiver coming to the back line left to right. Look at the window. Look at the anticipation. Walker could not have done any more. He led him perfectly into that hole right where it needed to be, and the freshman just unable to hold on to the football. 
He's had a pretty good night, but that a chance at a game time touchdown as he's consoled on the sidelines. Got to shake that off. Brian Kelly out on the field again, Chris, calling it another timeout. It's been one on defense here. He knows the importance of this play coming up. Conversations continue on this near sideline. It is third and goal for the Owls here in the nine yard line. A big fourth down conversion, the completion of Robbie Anderson got him in scoring position, but the Irish defense has been stout the last couple of plays, Kirk. Robbie Anderson now all the way up at the top. One on one with Cole Luke. Four receiver set. Walker looks for the end zone again, incomplete. That time Ramon Deloach was knocked down. Here comes a late flag now, and the Irish defenders frustrated. A shoemate who came in high. It's not going to improve Brian Kelly's mood vis a vis the officials in the American Conference here. As they huddle up, this is a you know, crucial it's, call. It's the, the whole defenseless player issue with the receivers up in the air, and he makes a hit on it. Personal him. foul. Targeting defenseless player. Defense number 22. The previous play is under review. Elijah's shoemate guilty of the targeting. They'll review it. If it stands, he's, of course, ejected from this game. Keep an eye. 22 here coming in after Deloach made the catch. It was a helmet to helmet collision. Dave Katai, our officials guru, is in the booth. How do you see that one, Dave? Well, exactly what you said, Chris. It is a hit above the shoulder. It is a defenseless player. Now, I really he's going down, but the only thing replay can look at is whether that's forcible contact above the shoulder. That's what they have to determine. I don't think there's enough here to change it on the field, but we'll see. What he hey, wanted is a really official. good look at it. I mean, mm. that, that's 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 above the shoulder. It definitely is above the shoulder, Kirk. The key is is enforceable contact. I kind of think it is. You can't use the crown of the helmet. That let look pretty forcible. Yeah, I agree. I agree. This could be significant After loss. Review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Number 22 is disqualified. After distance to the goal, automatic first down. One half. So instead of fourth and goal and a field goal attempt, Shoemate's out, and it's first and goal for the Owls. Shoemate now ejected and will miss first. the first half of the next game that they have against Pitt on the road at Pitt. New life for this Owls offense in the meantime. And this is a position where Brian Kelly and Brian Van Gorder, they've had some real issues back there. Farley and Redfield and Shoemate. Shoemate's been, of all of them, he's been an anchor. And now you're seeing a senior, Barati, come into the game, number 29. Drew Tranquil, one of the starting safeties, out with a knee injury. It's been an epidemic of injuries to Irish starters. And now with Shoemate's ejection, a further test of the depth on this defense. The Owls set up at the four-yard line as Shoemate heads for the locker room. This is an area on first and ten again. Zone read with your quarterback Walker and Thomas. Use zone read. Thomas starts ahead. Short gain. Rochelle stopped him at the three. You know, you, you, you lose Shoemate and you lose a guy who was able to communicate as a senior and can do a lot of things for a defense. Oh boy, Thomas that's not good to see there. Has been the workhorse running back. He's got a touchdown run. In all seven games, looked like he's holding on to his, his midsection there. Well, Rochelle came down on top of him, all 290 pounds. Let's see number 90 right there, a couple defenders, and maybe it's the way he landed and the amount of weight that came down on top of him. Thomas wears one of those single-digit jerseys, which is a badge of honor voted on by your teammates. Only the toughest players, as voted on by the Owls, can wear those single digits. Most of the guys are on defense, but but Thomas, as a running back, earned that honor from, from the teammates. That, that toughness being tested right now. You, you see the group. It's kind of a unique what tradition here. What a here. neat you, tradition, yeah. and when you bring it up to these guys, they all talk about that being a goal of theirs when they're when they're a freshman boy they look up to those guys that have those single digits and they think boy one day maybe i'll be lucky enough to to wear that single digit jihad thomas telling us that as well now it's great to see him jogging off the field and that's what the crowd's reacting to 
may have had just a, maybe the wind knocked out of him. Like I said, Rochelle came down on top of him, and the ball was underneath him. Okay, Kirk, with Thomas out getting a rest here, what do you call on, on second and goal without your top running back in the game? But they, they have as much confidence in the true freshman Armstead, a different kind of runner, uh, but, a, but a runner that has an ability to run with, with low pad level. So you can also make, you can run a bootleg, get, get that athletic walker on the corner. Armstead lined up behind the fullback, Sharga. Two tight ends, a power look. It is Armstead, the true freshman, who does lower his shoulder down near the goal line. They'll be a yard away on third down. Barati in for Shoemate on the stop. It's a pretty good effort there by the freshman who hasn't had a lot of action tonight to come into this situation. Yep. Well, they've not had a lot of success. You get into that eye formation, and Notre Dame has a pretty good idea that Armstead's going to get the football, and he almost worked his way through and got into the end zone. Thomas back in now. Third down. Temple a yard away from perhaps tying this game. Thomas has got it, but he doesn't have the touchdown. Stopped perhaps a foot short of the goal line. It'll be fourth down again. How about the surge again by the Notre Dame defensive line? Daniel Cage, Isaac Rochelle. Again, the Temple troubles continue on these third and shorts. They, they don't really have a great deal of success. Thomas is not the most powerful no, inside no. runner. And again, you, I think you play into the hands of a dominant front seven when you go into an eye formation. That, that's, that's their wheelhouse. The strength of the Notre Dame defense is their front seven. When you go eye formation football and run right into it, that's a tough ask. And I know Temple prides themselves on Temple tough. But the way this game has gone, that, that's, uh, that is a little bit of a mismatch up front. A massive play coming up. Rule wants to talk about it in this timeout. Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart. Brought to you by Pacific Life. For life insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper and college football. It's a one-of-a-kind tradition. And AT&T, mobilizing your world. Irish defensive front has had control tonight. What will the Owls call here on fourth and goal after the timeout? Thomas, the lone setback. Tough sledding again into the interior. I think if you get Walker and Thomas to the, to the corner, it gives you a better chance. Anderson comes in motion. They flip it to Thomas. Makes a cut and scores. <laughs> Temple tough. Running back knocked out of the game. Kirk comes right back in and gets the Owls within a point. What great patience and confidence as a runner by Jahad Thomas. Keep in mind, Shoemate's out of the game. 29, Barati is in for him. Got a chance? Nope, no chance against Jahad Thomas. He set that up perfectly. Patience, patience, foot in the ground, cut back, and Barati, who just checked into the game for Shoemate, never had a chance in the open field. Austin Jones try to tie the game. An eventful 14-play, 78-yard drive. They had a fourth-down conversion to Anderson, a targeting penalty against Shoemate prolonged the drive, and a fourth-and-one touchdown run by Jahad Thomas. 10-51 to play in Philadelphia. The Owls trying to continue their strength in the fourth quarter have tied this game at 17. Brian Kelly's offense back to work. And Matt Rule and his defense all smiles right now. What's going to happen next? Cassidy Hubbard for the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Update. I showed you earlier the go-ahead Duke touchdown with six seconds left. Well, then this happens. After eight laterals, Corn Elder takes it to the house. Now, the official announced that there was a block in the back, but after a nine-minute review, the official said they determined the block was legal. So, touchdown stands, and Miami wins. Chris Herbie? A nine-minute review, Cassidy? 
Well, Jahan Thomas recruited because P.J. Walker, who had been signed by the Owls, said, hey, check out my high school teammate, my childhood buddy. He's a pretty good running back. Sanders from the end zone tries to make a play, hit hard, spins away, still alive. And Sanders finally dropped at the 20. But Thomas, following P.J. Walker, his close buddy, they're still roommates, tandem in the backfield, and that fourth-quarter touchdown run by Thomas on a fourth down has tied us at 17, the Pacific Life game summary. What is that bottom line? 5-101 against ranked teams. No other FBS program has fewer than 17 wins against ranked teams. Temple trying for their sixth ever and their biggest ever. Temple Crown trying to make a tough one. Kaiser down in that end. Looking to throw one first down. Now rolls out. Chased and dropped. It's a sack. Jared Alwan and Jaquise Thomas, the safety. Heather. Well, Chris, an update for you on Jihad Thomas. I was told by the athletic training staff that on that first run, you guys were right. He got the wind knocked out of him. But then on that second run, on that touchdown run, he fell on the ball on the exact same spot. They're calling it a bruised sternum. He came off having trouble breathing. They have now put a pad around it and wrapped it up. He will continue. He is earning that single-digit toughness number tonight. He <laughs> sure is, Heather. Just a little spray there. Just wrap it up. Yeah. Got to keep going. But the Temple defense making a play. So at second and 14, Kaiser flips it to Procise. Good block by Carlisle. A hard hit. And it'll be third and long for the Irish. Hayes eventually made the stop. These guys are running around right now. Here comes now. the flags. A few flags came in after the play was dead, long after it was dead. It looked like maybe... There were a couple Notre Dame offensive linemen that came in there. Nick Martin, the two-time captain. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, late hit, offense, number 72. After distance to the goal, third down. He's a very smart player, a veteran. Mark, you don't expect that kind of thing no, from him. No, I mean, it was forward progress. Whistles are being blown. The officials have this thing under control, and Nick's going to take matters into his own hands right there. This kind of lowers it, lowers the boom on the Temple defense as a group, but the officials had this. The whistles were blowing. Everything was fine, and he just lost his cool there. The crucial moment in this game, especially a two-time captain. Early, it was Temple's penalty problems. Now it's the Irish in the second half. Remember the last time they had the ball here, second 33 and third and forever is because of those penalties. Third and 18, back at the 12. And now right in front of the student section, you got to be smart if you're Deshaun Kaiser. As loud as it's been all night. Now's rush only three. Kaiser escaping, hit, flips it back to Procise, and he's going to be knocked down at the 25, far short of a first down by Alwan and Matikevich. So here comes the punt. Just nowhere to go with the football. Veteran defense, confidence. It's one thing to rush three and drop eight. It's another thing when you do it with spacing, and you take away the four receivers that are out trying to, trying to create some separation. There was nowhere for him to go with the football, and all he could do was dump it down there on third and long and get it to pro size. And the Owls special teams make a play. Chandler is back deep at his 35. Temple very good at threatening the punter. Newsom gets it away. It bounces and spins back to the 39. So Matikevich and the Owls defense get the football back for the offense. 17 apiece midway fourth quarter. It's 11 years now. Allstate and the good hands field goal nets making contributions to general scholarship funds for each field goal and PAT made. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. So Temple, all they could have asked for in this potential landmark victory opportunity tied in the fourth quarter against the Irish with the football from their 39. It's rare they've had field position this good tonight. Walker takes off and has a seam in the Notre Dame territory at the 40, showing his quickness. 
What a time to call this with a corner blitz. You'll see Kabari Russell come here, but this is the read. They get a two for one because the defensive end collapses. There's Kabari Russell. So once he gets outside of his read, Russell's also gone. Then he picks up a block. Perfectly timed call by Satterfield. Remember that last time they had the ball, the zone read became an aspect of this offense for the first time all night. They had success with Walker keeping it and also giving it to Thomas. First down, this is Thomas again. Temple's only run now 53 plays, Kirk, so it, it's hard to inflict all the body blows they talk about, but they are such a confident fourth quarter team. They execute so well in this part of the game. Well, but when you have so much success in an area, you, you just start to believe it. And, and this team, because of the way coming in tonight, they've outscored people 137 at 29. What happens over the course of six, seven, eight games, you start to just believe, guys, we get this game into the second half, we look up in the fourth quarter, which is exactly what Matt Rule told us. We're going to find a, a way to win this football game. We've been there before. Second and 10. Thomas takes off, has a crease, and dives for a nine-yard gain, continuing to show his toughness. As, as Heather told you, he's hurting, but he's still out he there. He is. He's showing a lot, of, a lot of fight here. That zone read, again, that was a big part of their last series, is, is again, effective. He's going to have to check out. The freshman will have to come back in. But the reason it's working is right now as a defense, that is hitting so fast that when he makes the right read, they're getting finally up to the second level and making the blocks on the linebackers to open up some running room for Thomas. Armstead, the freshman, behind Sharga. Owls have failed to convert on their last five third downs. Armstead, stutter step. Bangs free and makes a first down to the 28. And just seeing those fresh legs come in, it's a different feel. But I'm at Ahmed, the left guard, pulling around and opening that up. Now they're going to go a little bit of tempo here after that first down. Try to keep Notre Dame on its heels. Interesting decision. This clock inside of six and a half to play. And the Irish, should they fall behind here? Only one timeout to work with. Just file that away for later on. Armstead again Cannot get the edge. It's strung out very well by Aquara who drops him for a loss Aquara did a good job of working off of a block to be able to get in position to be able to make that play Major the tight end he worked off of and extended Can it when you get into an eye formation? for Temple it's much much tougher to come bring line two tight ends eye formation and have success running against this front much more success when they're in the shotgun you spread that defense out it opens up some running lanes into the middle of that defense second and 13 they fake it to Armstead loop it far side going up to make the catch at the 20 yard line this Ventrell Bryant who's slow to get up Went up very high and then came down hard on his back. He sure did, but it was a heck of an effort. Remember, he had to drop in the end zone. Yeah. Little zone read they've had again success. He just floats it up in the air, hopes that 6-3, Brian at 6-3 will high point the ball over top of Cole Luke at 5-11. That's exactly what he's able to do. He held, holds on to the ball. And Chris, you're right. Look how high he is. He, all that weight coming down on his shoulder yeah. and on his head there yeah, it was the left shoulder that hit hard and great point you made he was the guy that had that crucial drop the ball that should have been the catch it, it didn't end up haunting them because they were able to right, score on right. fourth down and but you it, saw the emotion on his yeah. face being a young player he was he was broke he had a broken heart that he let his team down but he's had a big night tonight and, and he comes back here it's his first chance he's had to make a catch since that drop in the end zone and once again temple moves into the red zone and that catch Sets up a, a third and short. They need two yards here. Back to that eye formation. Thomas comes back in the game. An offset eye. Walker rolling, flips it short. Oh, Thomas couldn't corral it. Wasn't perfectly thrown, but... Jihad will be disappointed. He's a very good receiver. Yeah, he, he has as good a hands as anybody on this team. The ball is behind him, but it's a great play call. I mean, it, here, now, now you get the I formation, but you still, you get the ball out 
where he's got a chance to be able to make somebody miss. And he would have had to have put a move on Joe Schmidt there to be able to pick up that first down. But the ball behind him, unable to hold on to it. So Temple, a chance to take a lead here. If Austin Jones, who converted earlier with a season-long 41, can make this one from 37. Drives it right through. And the Owls, who specialize in fourth quarter wins, are up by three with 445 left. Well, the Owls trying to spring a Halloween surprise here in Philadelphia as we check the Capital One college football rankings. A whole bunch of teams in the top ten had the week off. TCU rolling on Thursday. Clemson a 15-point win. They'll have the Seminoles at home next week. But number nine, Notre Dame now down by three. Their playoff chances about to evaporate if they can't march for at least a field goal here. And a reminder that Temple trying for their first top 10 win since 45. And they knocked off number 10 Holy Cross. A team that until recent weeks hasn't even been ranked since 79. And the entire Owl yeah. sideline locked in arms and swaying back and forth as the kickoff drops Sanders deep in the end zone. And now Kirk challenge for Deshaun Kaiser has been up to a lot so far tonight. He, he has and remember the first time we saw him the pressure was on him. He had to come in from Malik Sire makes a huge throw late in that game to win it in Charlottesville. The pressure he dealt with at Clemson. He had some loads but he also kept in a position to be able to fight back and then last game out against USC at home trailing in the second half. Kept his composure that's the thing that he'll have to do here keep his composure make good decisions He's been here before, which allows him to be confident in this kind of setting, down three with just under five minutes to go in the game. And Will Fuller, the Philadelphia product, their big playmaker, has been held in check tonight, hasn't yet been able to make a play. Is this his time? They rush only three. Kaiser has all kinds of room. And slides down at the 30. You got five there. Uh, and I think that what Kaiser, I'm sure, was reminded by Brian Kelly is we're, we're not in a minute and a half here. We, we're, we're still at 430. And that time, Temple rushed three and dropped eight, almost in a prevent defense. And if they're going to do that, he's got to be willing to just check it down and get the ball thrown underneath if they're going to give you those yards. Kaiser have been held at 25 rushing yards after halftime. On second down, pressured, flips it short to Procise on a screen who can't get away. That is a terrific play by Nate D. Smith, the defensive end. It's third down. How about the athletic ability by Nate Smith, who was a middle linebacker. Keep that in mind, a three-year starter as a middle linebacker. He works around this block to come up with this play. He Look at him. He goes around Steve Elmer. That was impressive enough. And then to be able to bring down C.J. Procise, that background to play a linebacker helped him out there third and four loudest part of the stadium right there for Kaiser in the pocket back pedals delivers far side catch made fuller first down out at the 38 not a big play, but a clutch play for and, the Philadelphia native. And patience in chemistry. And it looked like he might start to panic, but he gives his receiver, his go-to man, Fuller, a chance to work away. That's, that's just chemistry and an understanding between a quarterback and a wide receiver. Late pressure against Kaiser, who throws downfield wide open. Jones! Muscles down into the red zone. Alize Jones, the young tight end, finally make it a play in the Irish in business. Well, they had three receivers. He was the inside receiver. Jones, the freshman out of Las Vegas, has a lot of athletic ability. He was able to get behind coverage and be able to come up with a great move to the outsides. You can see the coverage is up tight. Great read and recognition there. And he, they were taking everything away underneath. Jones slips in behind it, and they come up with a huge gain after that pickup of the first down on third down to Fuller. 45 yards, and the Irish again back in the red zone where they've had some struggles tonight. 
Nate Elsmith, who made that tackle, had to leave the game. Please reset the game clock to three minutes and one second and started on my signal. Thank you. You go back, here's Fuller here, but here's the route. And you can see he gets behind that coverage. They stay up tight. See how he sneaks in behind that. Concerned about Will Fuller. And instead of locking into Fuller, he just reads the coverage. Makes a great throw to the freshman Jones behind it. Red zone has been a challenge all night tonight. Yeah, just one touchdown, Kirk, in four tries and those two interceptions. Kaiser looking run all the way. Cannot escape as Matikevich will wrestle him down at the line of scrimmage. That time they were spying the quarterback. Yeah, just really impressed with the way these guys are able to maneuver around blocks. Watch eight have to deal with blocks. Works his way around. Nick Martin, who's one of the better centers, more experienced centers you'll see. Just has a way of, of, of using every ounce of his athletic ability. We mentioned earlier, he's one of those guys that studies just a ton of film as a four-year starter. That's Nate D. Smith, another one of those veterans in the Temple defense who's being helped by the training staff. Matikevich, one of those guys that, as you said, he'll, he'll go to class in the middle of the afternoon. He'll come back. He <laughs> served dinner for the players at the facility. Yeah. He just want to devour more and more tape while he's devouring his food. Yeah, I mean, the, it, the, it'll be 10 o'clock at night, yeah. and they're at the, the football offices, and the coaches are in there still looking at film. He's in his own film room like, like he's basically a GA. Like an assistant coach. You're right. He's but, got a master's degree in defense, doesn't he? He does. And by and being around Phil Snow, one of the better defensive look at, minds, look at a smile. he's loving this, man. I mean, he, he'd play all night. To be a Temple Owl, a veteran who's part of a 2 and 10 team, kicked around, laughed at just a couple of years ago. These guys growing up together to be in this position. And how about, smiling. And how about it coming down to the defense in the red zone? The guys that have been out here and played so much football together over the course of the last three or four years. A lot of veterans on this defense. It's the strength of their team. But a lot of weapons for Kaiser to work with down here. He's maneuvering Jones now back to an inline tight end position. A little chess match pre-snap here. Kaiser looks to the end zone. Loops the throw. Caught. Touchdown. Will Fuller hometown touchdown. And the Irish take the lead. 17 yards, Kirk, and you had a feeling Will Fuller, so fired up for his homecoming game, would eventually do something tonight. He threw that on a line, and, and I can't wait to take another peek at this because Will Hayes was the safety, number 32 back there, and I don't know why he was a little hesitant. I don't know why he didn't break on the ball. It was a good throw by Kaiser. He knew with the Hayes back there, he had to throw it on a line. If he would have thrown it up in the air, Hayes would have come over and probably intercepted it. But Hayes was hesitant to come over to knock that ball away. Justin Yoon with an important conversion because it gives the Irish a four-point lead with 2.09 to play. Another look as Kaiser connects. This is Hayes back here. They're going to make the throw. When you have a safety here, you've got to throw this on a line. You cannot float the ball up in the air, but keep an eye on him right here. Watch him and see what prevents him from coming over quicker and making a play on the ball. It's almost like he took a poor angle. Nonetheless, Kaiser does a great job with the throw. Look at that little window, how tight that is. You got to throw it like it's a laser to get it in there, and that's where the arm strength comes into play. That ball is not very high off the ground, thrown with a lot of velocity just to get it in there to his guy, Will Fuller. First touchdown pass of the season for Kaiser who's soon a touchdown in all of his starts and after a couple of red zone picks he showed a lot of confidence in his arm didn't he in that <laughs> he, situation he did and Will Fuller who's had a relatively quiet night the big conversion on third down yep. when the play pro, uh, broke down and they, they had to improvise he comes up with that first down conversion and then the touchdown there when it really mattered in the red zone the Irish come up big and we still got 209 to go talking about Fuller who loves this town so much he has the Liberty Bell and that, and that famous love of statue tattooed on his right arm. Thomas is back there as a kick returner. And that's Avery Williams, number two, making the return to the 23. 
Final reminder that Goodyear providing you the aerial coverage. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven, official aerial provider. So now the Owls find themselves behind again, Kirk. And needing a touchdown, they are 76 yards away, 202 to play. I think P.J. Walker and the boys thought about this. Walker and Thomas growing up together, same high school, thought about this opportunity. 202 to go playing Notre Dame, the top 10 team, and a chance to go down and try to beat them. Irish show pressure. Walker escapes, darts up the middle. And is knocked down after he makes the first down at the 38 by Redfield. Well, Sheldon Day got in there in a hurry. And this time, you saw the ability to escape the pressure by Walker and the athletic ability. They want him to use his feet more. But that's an example of needing to do that right there. Quick 15 yards on first down. Delivers incomplete. Anderson in traffic could not make the catch with Redfield bearing down on him. Talked about these guys growing up playing in the same high school, Elizabeth, New Jersey, and had Walker, who was a little bit more heavily recruited, really not that much uh, more, but uh, being recruited, he told Matt Rule, you got to look at my running back. You got to look at my running back, and now here they are playing for Temple in a huge game. Yeah, they, against they met, Notre met his eight year olds playing Pop Warner yeah. and basketball together. Yeah. Walker delivers a completion. And short of the first down, a couple yards short is the Loach who makes his first catch. So third and two, it's been a problem area for the Owls. And Brian Van Gorder not getting conservative, bringing pressure, bringing the blitzes from the safeties there on second down. Walker loops it downfield for Anderson. It would have been a very tough throw over Kavari Russell, who was in coverage. And now it comes down to a fourth and two with a minute 14. There's a flag down. And Sheldon Day saying the Owls grabbed him. Hands to the face is the preliminary signal against Temple. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Offense number 72. 15 yard penalty. Third down. I don't I don't I don't see a 72 on the on the on the field. Neither does Matt Rule. Maybe it's 75. It's perhaps 52 loft in there, but in any case, now it's 75 who's going up against Sheldon Day. It's a mid who's had his hands full against Sheldon Day all game, but that is a costly penalty for Temple. They take it, of course, rather than a fourth and two, they back them up to a third and long from the 32. Walker escapes and then throws downfield. Intercepted. Russell jumped in front of John Christopher and the Irish are going to hold on. When the game's on the line, you need your better players to step up and make a play. Walker's just trying to make a play. Steps up in the pocket. Looked like he may have had a chance, maybe underestimated the closing speed of Kavari Russell. Heartbreaking for P.J. Walker, but a good play by Russell, who incidentally against USC with a game on the line came up, not only with a big interception, but also a tip pass that led to an interception by Max Redfield. Some back-to-back -back games. One of their better players late in the game needs to play, make a play, and Kavari Russell does exactly what he needs to do. And yes, he got his hands under it. That's an interception. I think Christopher thought he had a catch, and Russell just came out of nowhere from behind the receiver to make the pick. The first turnover for Temple tonight. Owls can stop the clock twice. And Procise tackled, and Temple will spend the first time out with a minute two to go. Cassidy Hubberth with the Ford wrap-up right after the game. We'll have more reaction on this one as well as the Irish try to take an important step towards that 11 and 1 season staying in playoff consideration among the top one loss teams along with Alabama who plays LSU next week and of course Stanford and those two teams will collide at the end of the year in Palo Alto yeah and they're, they're just trying to get to that point you know how it is when you get to November there are no foregone conclusions I don't care who you play when these rankings start to come out the pressure starts to become very very severe 
And sometimes you have teams that have nothing to lose and they go in to play you and sometimes they can shock the world. If you want to join the folks on ESPN at 7 o'clock Eastern time, the inaugural edition of the college football playoff top 25 rankings show, the exclusive release of the 12 person committee's rankings. They'll be meeting down in Dallas and looking at games like this one and come out with their first set of rankings, which certainly can change a lot till the final set of rankings that matter. We saw that last year. Kaiser, a very safe play, just keeps it. Actually shakes the tackle, gets out across the 40, and the Owls will spend their final timeout with 58 seconds left. Well, the LG V10 moments of this Saturday weren't any significant surprises. Clemson was given a, a hard fight by NC State, but they, they dodged the potential look ahead to the Knowles, and they win it by 15. Slow start. But this one recover. is your favorite game of the day here. Only 123 oh, score. <laughs> oh, man. You start watching some of those games in a Big 12. It's painful but if you like defense. Goal line stand there to win the little brown jug against the Gophers in Minneapolis. And ben Gorder never stopped coaching. Just in case they have to go back out there to defend perhaps yeah. a Hail Mary, he's still coaching you know, them up. It, it, one of the things the committee has to be able to evaluate and separate is some of the games in the Big 12 where you see these shootouts and all the points being scored versus a game like this. You know, where you see Notre Dame go into Philadelphia and play Temple. And if you don't watch Temple and you don't realize, Temple's a really good football team this year. This is more impressive a win than I think maybe some people realize because of how, what kind of team Temple has. If you watch this game tonight, you know how hard-earned this victory was for the Irish. They have Temple take the lead with an incredible drive. A couple of fourth-down conversions as Kaiser is knocked down just short of the marker. It'll be fourth down, and Temple cannot stop the clock running at 45 seconds. 75-yard drive. They did it in six plays, 236. And Will Fuller, Philadelphia native, making the catch that may prove to be the game winner for Brian Kelly's team tonight. He looks like he's just going to let it run down to that one second call a timeout. And Chris, we should say, if Notre Dame goes on to win this game, and we'll see, it's not over. We all watched the Michigan-Michigan State game. It's not over yet. But if they do, it, this is a heck of a win by the Irish, finding a way late, showing that toughness that they've had to show sometimes this year on the road. They found a way to win. And for Temple, they have nothing to apologize for. Th this is a big, big week for them. A lot of exposure. Everybody wondered how they would handle the prime time, the spotlight, playing here with the Eagles play. It's sold out, which doesn't happen very often. And they took advantage, in my opinion, of this stage and of this opportunity. And they, they put on a great performance coming up a little bit short. Did not come out here for moral victories, but I, but I agree with what you said. They, they showed the country this is a very, very solid team and, and a solid football program. This won't be just a one-year blip, I don't think. But you brought up the Michigan-Michigan State game, so we have to yeah. run off the final five seconds here. And I'm sure Brian Kelly, you know. He knows how good Temple's yeah. been at blocking punts. You know, with your five seconds, you snap the ball to your quarterback. You, you run backwards for three or four seconds, and you take a knee. You got a couple personal protectors to, to take care of him, to help him out. You don't even risk a punt here. I wouldn't, yeah. no. Not I agree. And Kaiser is still involved in the conversation with you Kelly, know, which would if suggest. something happens like that against Michigan and Michigan State, that kind of thing, everybody learns from it. You, you think you've covered it, and then everybody makes sure they have a little bit more time on Thursday in practice to cover these kind of situations. They put two seconds back on the clock, so there are seven seconds to play. Kaiser, by the way, was an excellent punter in high school. He's been a pooch punter occasionally, so you could. No, no, no. You don't want you to. You could leave him in the game. Just boot it down there, though. Yeah, he, he could just drop back two or three steps, throw the ball as high and as far as he can, straight up, you know, but land it about the 20-yard line. You could do that, too. Or throw it out of bounds. Just throw it as far as you can out of bounds. The clock will expire. Is Kaiser in the game? Who will just do that? Drop back, step up, lost the ball momentarily, and just fires it in the bench. Oh, my goodness. The clock has run out, but very nearly a turnover. You can see that Kaiser 
knows they got away with something yeah, I, there. I, I was surprised that he, I, I thought he might do that, but I didn't think he would step in front of two defenders. Martin Oguike, 50, gets his hands on the ball and knocks it away. If Temple had been able to fall on that, game is over that perhaps yeah. would have had a, a second or two to throw it toward the end zone but the Irish as Kelly congratulates rule come into Philadelphia and take down a very game Temple team a come from behind fourth quarter rally by number nine Notre Dame to stay in playoff consideration Heather with Brian Kelly Chris thank you so much coach Temple didn't make it easy how did you keep this team believing and keep your composure well you know we've got a, a group that's you know veteran and, and they believe they're gonna win as well and we've been a fourth quarter team all year and uh, you know we made a play when we needed to you know we had too many missed opportunities obviously in the red zone uh, but we showed great resiliency again it's a very very good temple football team you've talked this week during your bye week that this is a team that is in march madness mode so how did you get them to play like it's one and done but not pressing too much well you know again we're playing with a young quarterback you know and and we got to play better around him um, but he made it huge play when he needed to we mounted the big drive when we had to come up big and uh, I'm proud of the way our kids competed tonight and found a way on the road to win a good football game and your defense certainly stepped up as well sealing the win with that interception what was your reaction as that defense as your defense did that well it, you know we needed to make a play we hadn't made many plays and it was good to see Kavari come up with a play and we knew we needed to obviously offensively get a first down and and obviously we made it tough there at the end but uh, we found a way to win describe the confidence level you have in your young quarterback Deshaun Kaiser after throwing two picks in the first half and coming to play in the second well it's the confidence he has in himself as well so we're gonna let him play he made a check down here in the red zone for the touchdown we had a run play on he checked out of it uh, and threw a great ball uh, in the corner of the end zone coach Kelly congrats on the win thanks I appreciate it Heather, thank you a comprehensive analysis from coach Kelly the AT&T strong performance focusing on Deshaun Kaiser who was 23 of 36, 299, had a late touchdown pass, the game winner to Fuller. Did have a couple of picks, but had a great game on the ground as well. Ran for 143, and he's with Heather. Chris, thank you so much. Deshaun, congratulations. We just talked to your coach and the level of confidence that he has in you, and he said it's about your confidence level. Where is it right now? You know, uh, I've gotten a lot of experience in the first, you know, six, seven games of the season, and I've been in a lot of uh, situations as a young quarterback, and it's kind of sculpted me into the guy I am right now. Um, I've been through quite a bit. And, you know, the, the, the last drive of there that we are playing, um, I already went through it once and twice, and um, that, that experience is what's allowed me to be comfortable out there. Describe to me your mindset after two picks. I don't one of them was tipped but how do you go into the locker room and then come out and have the second half performance that you did it's tough it's frustrating you know go, go in the red zone in the first half two times and end up with two interceptions it's unbelievable that's, that's uncalled for and I, I'm not allowed to do that you know I'm, I'm completely taking that on upon myself uh, I'm trying to fit balls into spots where they're, they're not supposed to be fit into and uh, that, that's you know that's laziness on my part and I'm gonna have to make sure that I can improve with that but to go into to go into the locker room and see the guys who are completely you know have smiles in their face and still have the confidence in the Irish offense that they have uh, is it makes it a little easier to come back out here and play some good football in the second half. Describe how the play developed and the and how you guys reacted to your, your fellow teammate over here, the Philly native Will Fuller, in that final game-winning touchdown drive. Yeah, they, um, they were playing a lot of cloud coverage, bringing a safety over top of Will all game. Um, I, I kind of understood that there's going to be a hole in that little that uh, cover two area that I haven't, I wasn't able to um, come across throughout the whole game. And uh, once we came out, we came out with a run play. Um, they, they put a little extra in the box. We broke it down into, got into Max Pro, and I trusted the best receiver in the country to go up and get one for me. Very impressive. Well done. Thank you. Chris? And there's Will Fuller right there. So Kaiser, as a reliever, against Virginia and now an established starter has twice